Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 13, verse 14. Be there. One, two, read. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. One more time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah. One of the greatest blessings I believe of God in my life, aside from the gracious knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit, one of the greatest blessings that I consider from God to me is the deliverance that he brought to my mind by letting me know that the kingdom is founded upon definite structures. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? I grew up and I was taught that whatever will be, will be. Have you heard that kind of teaching? I was taught that whatever happens, just give thanks and don't ask any question. I was taught that whatever you don't understand, God doesn't want you to understand. If he wants it, he will reveal it to you. So I grew up letting God become absolutely responsible for my life. And it looked very spiritual. Hallelujah. And I found out that my life was like a chess. Anything would just be played left, right and center. Just like many of our lives. But then I got to understand by revelation and by the ministry of treasures in the body of Christ. How that when it comes to the gospel of the kingdom, it is a gospel of partnership. Many men of God call it covenant. I choose to call it partnership. The reason is because in a covenant, if you break the terms of the contract, you will suffer. But in partnership, your partner can help you even when you default. You see why I choose to call it partnership? I'm not against the concept of covenant, but I, I feel comfortable knowing that I'm in partnership with the Spirit. Because it is possible to be in partnership with someone who is able to cover for your limitations. And that introduces the mercy of God in the equation. But the fact that the mercy of God is available does not mean that I will not play my role. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And week after week, by the grace of God, is that rain? Please come in. Ushers, coordinate them. Let's be very fast. Come in, sit everywhere everywhere please come in come in come in with your chairs as much as possible we apologize it's a rainy season come in just bring them in please let the rain not we already appreciate your commitment bring them in their spaces add you can add more seats in front please hallelujah we really apologize. We are a very responsible ministry. And my heart goes out to all those who do not have seats. Or those who are outside. We really apologize. Praise God. You can add more chairs in front. Bring them in front. Don't feel embarrassed. Relax. Make yourself very comfortable. One of the reasons why men of God do not get blessed and one of the reasons why God does not honor many ministries with people is because they do not know that ministry is all about people. Hallelujah. When you treat people like animals, they will not come to your church or to your meeting. Hallelujah. Forget the fact that we teach and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is this. If you like, don't come and get blessed. By the time you see empty pews again and again, you must change your confession. We treat people with honor and dignity because the Bible says, now we do not yet appear we shall, what we shall be like. We realize that we are treating men and women of royalty, men of dignity. Only God can tell how far. Because the word of God that we teach and preach is the incorruptible word of God that is able to make any man become great. Once again, we apologize. 
Thank you, Jesus. So tonight I'm teaching on one of those keys again. Many of us have been receiving these keys again and again. Please just indicate by way of lifting your hands if you know that you are gaining understanding into the operation of spiritual things. Let me see your hands. That you can, like a doctor, look at someone's life right now. Hallelujah. Come, sir. Can I use you? If this brother comes to us right now and he says i'm being oppressed by demons and powers of darkness i expect anyone who has been faithfully listening to these teachings and even the many thousands and millions online who are following us listen i expect that you should be able to profess solution to this brother hallelujah and that solution is not to take him to joshua selman if you if the solution is to take him to joshua selman then you are not learning enough because the goal is not for one man to stand and become alpha and omega the goal is that by the investments of the word of god in you you are able to have the ability the revelation the faith and the anointing to legislate on behalf of heaven hallelujah so i expect just anybody at all to be able to walk up to this brother and say brother if you are in christ you are seated with christ in heavenly places and although this is true don't feel embarrassed it doesn't mean that because you are going through what you are going through the word of god is a lie i am here as an ambassador to enforce that verdict in your life hallelujah and then you expect the backing of heaven if this brother comes right now and says nothing is working in my life there's no job there's no finance there's no marriage there's no open door i'm a failure all around i expect any of us to be able to sit with this brother in three days and by the revelation the strategic revelation of the word of god you should be able to bless him listen the knowledge of the word is a gift you can give people hallelujah I can count money my brother even if it is one million naira if i give you it will finish either by carelessness or fruitful use it will still finish are you getting my point now but if i deposit in you notice my choice of words the strategic word of god not just the word of god by his stripes no not by his stripes um tithe give be blessed and so on and so forth that is not strategic you don't teach people that way that's information hallelujah teaching means to bring you into the understanding of the operation of kingdom principles that's what it means to understand when you understand the thing you can explain it if it is still vague you only know it you don't understand it the proof that you understand a truth in the kingdom is that you can teach it confidently hallelujah bless you sir Tonight, I'm sharing very briefly and then we'll pray on a message I titled Koinonia, Ancient Secrets to Power and Relevance. Koinonia and then colon, Ancient Secrets to Power and Relevance. Please listen to this message tonight. I truly believe it's very powerful and it will change our lives. His grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace, shines on me. It's your grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me listen you know why i took this song you know how confident i am about life you cannot imagine 
It's not arrogance. Ah, look, see, when you see me teach these truths, the Bible says, I found your word and I did eat them. And they became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. If I buy shares for you, you may be happy and you may feel secured, right? If I connect you to a rich man, you may be happy and feel secured. If I connect you to an anointed man, you may feel happy and secured. But brothers and sisters, when you are connected to the revelation of the truths of the kingdom, is the ultimate secret for confidence in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, like, it's like beer that intoxicates. Until it has become true in your life, you may not understand. This is why Paul even had to correct himself. He said, we make our boasting, but then he said in the Lord, so that you will not be misunderstood. The word of God gives you such a level of confidence. All of a sudden, when you understand the principles of the kingdom, you will now begin to connect the equations of life. You will now find out that as haphazard as life looks, there is a formula that governs its operation. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will just know that nothing just happens. There is a formula. Listen, when you find it, you have found it. It may, it may cost you to find it. But brothers and sisters when you find it it's an asset you don't need to refrigerate it i keep saying it you don't need to keep it with another untrusted person it's yours and it's yours for life hallelujah receive the word receive the word receive the word it's your way out of mediocrity in life it's your way out of irrelevance I don't know what you may be going through right now and i don't care how bad things are in your life i'm telling you the truth brothers and sisters if you receive the word of the kingdom the strategic understanding of the operation of the kingdom you are a champion and no power in existence can stop it it's not about prophecy it's not just about laying on of hands it's about coming to a point where you are built by knowledge So when you look at life, the thing that makes others panic, it no longer makes you panic. Because you understand the hidden operation of these realities. Many people just wait for the physical consequences of whatever happens in the spirit. And then they try to manage it when it appears physically. That's a risky way of living. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they that know their God. Daniel 11 32 the B part he said they shall be strong and in this life they will do exploits there are some of us here who are ministers of the gospel and we are trusting God to stamp his hand upon our lives I'm telling you this is the way it works there are some of us who are great leaders corporate leaders great people in different areas of our lives there are some of us who have come on behalf of ourselves and the numerous confused people that we have in our lineage and we know that we are the saviors if we miss it there might not be a door of opportunity but i have good news for you they said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth the word of god has equal value to any man there's no tribalism about the word of God. I hate tribalism. You would have noticed that. I hate tribalism of any sort. Because the word of God places us in the same position. Your only limitation is your degree of persistence and your degree of passion to spiritual things. What the word of God will do to a Hausa man, it will do to a Yoruba man. What the word of God will do to an Igbo person, it will do to a South-South person. What the word of God will do to an illiterate, it will do to a professor. The word of God has equal value. If it is received, believed, and acted upon. This for me is the ultimate representation of God's justice. That God is a just man, truly. Because if the word of God had a way of becoming an advantage 
unto others by default then would have said god god is playing injustice somewhere that means the word of god gives me the same opportunity the same opportunity the same opportunity and through the months the last two three months we've been talking about several things i am very proud of the fact that a majority of the people in this meeting are young people i'm very proud of it years ago let me tell you something years ago when god started with us and we started this great thing that we see today a lot of people felt it's just young people but they have forgotten that the man celebrating 50 years today was once a young man who was misled with wrong information and he he confused himself to old age and so for me a man of god said the lord told him something he said give me the youth and i will give you a new nation some of our parents are too old to effect change they will only leverage on our own transformation are you getting what i'm saying some of you are in children ministry and when you are talking to the children you just look at them little children hello wake up and see those who were i still remember very vividly when i was very very small if you have forgotten you are really old hallelujah i remember i remember a few commitments that i made in my life to seek god i have no regret because i always say this young people have time but they lack knowledge they are inexperienced they are naive old people don't have time but they have learned the lesson through pain but there's no time to correct it so we have the advantage of knowledge and time and i will get all the knowledge and do great things for the kingdom hallelujah isn't it amazing that some of the truths we are hearing, a number of people here are married, but most of us, many of us here are not married. Is it not a great blessing to know that your children will not eye you one day and say, goodness, what sort of father are you? Or what sort of mother are you? Are you not happy that your generation will look at you and say, we were blessed to have you? Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. I treasure this ministry. I treasure that which God is doing. It is an opportunity to transform lives. I said this thing about five, six years ago that we are all going to be great and the great parties will all know one another. Yes, we'll remember one another. Do not underestimate what the Holy Ghost is doing in the lives of people. This is a renaissance. It's a revolution. It's like the foxes that Samson set on fire and just sent them. There are some of you sitting down here. Even you, you do not know how mighty. Who knows, maybe there are wives of presidents in this place. What is wrong with that? I love that lady. She lifted her hands and said, hallelujah. In other words, I'm not sitting in the presence of God for nothing. There are multi- billionaire conglomerate owners who are spirit filled see that an apostolic not just wild people advancing hell they understand strategic kingdom advancement there are men and women of god who carry anointing indeed there will be very little competition when we start manifesting because great will be the grace upon us there will not be need for envying people. We will celebrate one another because we have become colleagues in victory. So I can be invited for a meeting. I may, I may not be able to go. I'll say, sir, please go for me. And I know that Christ will be glorified. It's not about one great MOG. That's why we are pressing. The earth will see wonders. Ah every man before he was used of god he believed he was nothing but not when god stretches his hands on you he will make a wonder lord we thank you for what you are doing 
I treasure and I appreciate what God is doing in my life and I'm encouraging you do not trivialize what God is doing in your life not everybody is as yielded as you are I hope you know that this is Friday night there are many disco halls that are open what's the time is the right time when everything is open and trust me there are some people sowing to the flesh making generous investments unto death but you are here building your spirit there is the justice system of God do not be deceived God cannot be mocked whatsoever not a preacher a man sows brothers you are standing now but you are already sowing for your children school fees will be paid you are not even aware when it was paid that's how blessed it can be because you will bless people your child will become a millionaire at age five not because you did anything it's a privilege they will make all your children head boy head girl it's not head boy anything it's just to bring the favor of god to the school i can imagine how my children will be you know i think about this thing let me tell you something very humorous a lady during my birthday she's here she bought me baby shoes as birthday gift and i said goodness that's that's for another day that's for another day that's for another day <laughs> do you believe in what god is doing in your life yeah that you will end certain cycles a day will come your name will become a password to favor for people that when when there are barriers and there's nothing to do they don't need to start shouting jesus foolish they say i know this gentleman see you know him are you sure please ah. may it happen oh god may it happen may it happen may it happen yes it will happen so let people laugh at you no problem let them criticize you no problem pay the price now sisters i can guarantee you you are going to marry very good men it's a guarantee like don't say amen i can guarantee you don't you think forget the fact that these brothers are wearing sandals and their jeans are faded what is in them he said though our outward man perish yet the inward man is being renewed you hold on they may not have forget about all these men that come with jeeps you have already seen their future you don't know the future of these ones those of you who are gullible following every man on, calm down you will see the rising when you see the son of man in power and glory you will remember brothers take your gary honorably give jesus praise because you're already counting days and same for the brothers i guarantee that you will marry virtuous ladies yes see the bible says he that finds a wife a, a wife is not the name of a lady a wife is 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 a is a is 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 a personal it's not a personality it's a what do i call it it's an office you must be a wife before you become found it's a he that finds a wife not he who's finding makes her a wife that, that's for another <laughs> ah, some of you are happy you wish i'll just continue you like this love and relationship thing We are taking over the mountains yes we are we are we are say after me i'm great, I'm great. please say it with revelation i am great this is not just it's not just those childish confession i am great i'm really great say i'm influential yeah. thank you jesus koinonia ancient secrets to power and relevance blessed be the name of the lord write this word down the teaching has begun please make sure you have something right you just shouted i'm great i'm great please write all your phones if you don't have don't feel bad don't be under pressure but next time please get a notebook not just a jotter that you bring out from the back of your pocket have a very good hardcover note see this 
this means a lot of things about you it means i am responsible i mean business about my life i'm not a joker and i'm going somewhere when you get a good hardcover notebook when you slip pieces of paper and with broken virus that are all stained it tells me the quality of your appreciation for your future write this word down uncommon <sighs> help us holy spirit I'm sharing something very spiritual and i trust that the power of god will back up the things that we're teaching tonight write that word down uncommon because this is what you are becoming the word uncommon means to be needed it means to be needed it means to be in high demand to be in high demand it means to be significant are you writing please it means i like this one not easily replaceable to be uncommon means that you are not easily replaceable it means worthy of honor to be uncommon means that you are worthy of honor it means you are an endangered species it means you are scarce you are highly prized i'm just talking hallelujah the revelation of the word of god is making us uncommon uncommon means you do not find it anywhere uncommon means you don't pick it on the ground gold is a treasured metal because you have to dig the earth to find it no one treasures sand so much because you can bend down and just pick it up so god is making us uncommon pray in one minute before i start teaching say lord you are making me uncommon i receive of that ministry i receive of that ministry Pray, you're making me uncommon. I'm becoming uncommon. I'm a joy to my family, to all those around me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word koinonia, please write it down. The word koinonia means there are actually seven meanings it's a greek word from the text that we just took the word koinonia it has seven meanings but i'll just focus on three of them number one it means communion the coming together of two people it means intimacy a state of closeness that brings about oneness intimacy and number three it means partnership or joint participation partnership or joint participation i have discovered in my life and i've studied from scripture that this word koinonia enshrined in this word is the revelation that holds the key to true power true anointing many of us when you see a man that is mightily being used by god we say this man is anointed or this is a powerful man of god or this man is full of grace you know and so on and so forth to mean that there is a rich deposit of the ability of the holy spirit in that man's life and tonight i want to show you the secret because there is a secret i call it an ancient secret an ancient secret that is responsible for power genuine authentic power the ancient secret that is responsible for timeless relevance relevance that cuts across dispensations relevant that cuts across age and geographic barriers koinonia that word Every 
every man in scripture we we see when when you read from genesis down to revelation you see that god used all sorts of people he used tamaras he used thieves doubting people temperous people educated people illiterate people so there were all kinds of people with their personality differences and temperaments but one thing happened to them all they had encounters and they came into this mystery called koinonia and that was the secret of the rich deposit of the spirit in their lives and it made them relevant through the dispensation of their generations and some of them were even referred to in dispensations that were not their own for instance abraham we make reference to him transgenerational relevance koinonia everybody say koinonia there is a state of intimacy and fellowship that you have with the holy spirit that will translate into the anointing of the spirit working in your life and tonight i'm going to guide us very briefly into it and then we'll pray there is something that you can know you know through the past months we've been exploring the concept of relevance success impact and all of that because it is very important it's not only enough for us to explore prayer spiritual things the gifts of the spirit you know and so on and so forth it, many of us will be consoled our christian experience will comfort us when we begin to learn the principles that make us relevant hallelujah koinonia that secret that the ancient knew right now we teach all kinds of formulas and i love principles we teach methods of getting the anointing I've, I've read a lot of books especially in recent times there are all kinds of books and all kinds of things that attempt to teach people on the anointing and i'm telling you unfortunately many of these people that write these books have not demonstrated the reality of the anointing in their lives and so they have written theological dissertations about the anointing and the workings of the anointing and the way it translates into making a man relevant and many people have applied these principles right now we 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 think the anointing is something or the power of the holy spirit is just a formula do a do b and then automatically it will happen no no you are dealing with somebody you are dealing with a personality you are not dealing with an animal you're not dealing with an object you're not dealing with a machine you are dealing with a real person who has emotions a real person who has a who can you can have fellowship with and if you do not understand koinonia then you may never taste kingdom relevance in your lifetime hallelujah fellowship the fellowship of the spirit here paul begins to speak in in second corinthians he said the grace of our lord jesus christ that grace is also the love of god and it says the fellowship of the spirit the fellowship the constant coming together the joint participation between you and the spirit let it remain with you i hope you know that the corinthian church were a powerful church it was it was in first corinthians 12 down to 14 that paul began to talk to the corinthian church because they were walking mightily in the gifts of the spirit they were moving in spiritual things paul even had to talk to them and in first corinthians 14 verse 40 he said let all things be done decently and in order he had to come in and bring order because the demonstration of the spirit upon their life was so rich it was creating chaos and the secret he encourages them to keep doing what they had been doing that brought the glory and the power of god and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship do not ignore fellowship with the holy spirit he was telling them make sure that you do not get too busy in life and in ministry make sure you do not become so much of a a a minister a preacher a celebrity that you forget the fellowship of the spirit because your relevance is tied to it this is what paul was trying to let the corinthian church know that the fellowship of the spirit be let it remain let it not become an occasional thing 
because the church was getting famous they were doing great things they were getting busy just like many of us are becoming busy let me tell you something with people when they start out with god because there are no invitations permit my bias i'm talking about ministers but it applies to every area of our lives as a minister when you're starting out no one knows you there's no ministry there's no invitation no grace speaking so it is easy to stay in the place of fellowship and i'll share a few components of that you know you stay you experience that koinonia you can dedicate a whole day a whole week but then something happens when you start becoming busy there are all kinds of ministrations here and there you have invitations and you have to even select which one to go and which one not to go at that point the the grace and the impetus to continue koinonia is affected because right now there is nothing to lose even if you stay for one month and you don't read anything there are tapes that have recorded the workings of god in your life and those tapes will open doors of ministration when you stand there will always be something to share and god cannot deny himself so you will still see the grace of god here and there in your meeting and then many people become stunted and many people even lose relevance i preached a message and you can get the teaching the secret of sustained glory i think it's a preparatory message to what i'm sharing tonight and if you don't have it you can get it from the media it's free the secret of sustained glory the secret of transgenerational relevance i don't want to be a man of god who will be relevant for four or five months and then one day they'll say ah i remember we used to know this guy oh he loved god i don't know what happened but it has happened there are so many people like that in this country there are men who were relevant in certain seasons they carried the banner of spiritual things they pioneered certain great things but right now their voices are silent i want to tell you something when you lose the fellowship of the spirit you have lost the place of spiritual power and you have lost the place of relevance when you lose koinonia when this word becomes foreign in your life and through your your words you cannot mention that word frequently again i'm assuring you you have lost spiritual power everybody say koinonia say fellowship that fellowship of the spirit the psalmist understood this and he said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me it was the holy ghost that took me it was koinonia that took me from a shepherd boy to become a king over the nation of israel and he said oh lord cast me not it's because of the presence of the holy spirit and this participation is because of my joint partnership that i've written so many songs i've written so many hymns that i am considered to be a great king because of one that works together with me and he says oh lord cast me not away let nothing happen in my life and in executing my work that makes you cast me from your presence because at that point i will begin to lose relevance hallelujah this happened to his son called solomon solomon theologically speaking wrote the book of ecclesiastes in his fallen state hallelujah that's why he wrote all sorts of things vanity upon vanity he was angry all his vanity he was communicating frustration because he had done all sorts of things the man who saw the manifest presence of god twice it was solomon who prayed at the dedication of the temple he said now arise so god and come to your resting place it was solomon now solomon had lost the place of koinonia and he began to lose relevance and he wrote the book of ecclesiastes advising people and communicating his frustration he said i gave myself to everything everything my eyes saw that i wanted i got no restraint because you see 
the place of intimacy is the place of pruning is where god creates boundaries in your life is where god builds you and as you're moving prosperity influence gives you options it enlarges your coast and it takes you returning to the spirit so that he will set boundaries otherwise you will break boundaries until you lose relevance hallelujah it is the absence of koinonia listen to me that can make a man of god begin to walk and live very well and do great things and when he finds out that god has blessed him with a large congregation made up of all kinds of pretty ladies lack of koinonia a visitation and a sustaining um remaining in the secret place that can make him compromise on the secrets and the principles that sustain the anointing until there are all kinds of of trouble in his life all sorts of things here and there disturbing a man of god's wife sleeping with somebody who came for counseling i'm not castigating people the mercy of god is still there but i'm just telling us it can be prevented are you getting my point now you can you can prevent it it can be prevented sorry you don't have to wait until you pass through it and then try to manage it there's a great man of god i honor the man so much he has a television ministry he was a great evangelist mighty evangelist then if there was a little scandal not now that a man of god can even come on stage and say i'm gay and then nothing happens congregation doesn't change then no matter how little the scandal was you've lost your ministry a great man of god by the name jimmy swaggart this man did mighty things. He was in the class of Benny Hinn and Reinhard Bonke and all these men of God. Mighty man. But just a little scandal. Just dropped him down. And he's risen back today. He's doing great things. But he may never be like before again. Hallelujah. A man of God who starts in the secret. And now becomes and all that he's obsessed about is cars he he can sit down browsing all through the night all sorts of cars because it's just to make the order and in six weeks he's, he's in his garage lost without restraint everybody say koinonia the secret of true spiritual power i'm teaching us this because it is important that we become relevant what are the components of true fellowship with the Holy Spirit? What must happen in your life for us to really say you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit? What does it entail? Koinonia is not just a vague thing. It's, it's something that is, is, you can describe the activities that happen in that secret place. Number one. Or before we even talk about them, let me just tell you something. If you want to enjoy intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the first thing is that you must recognize and respect His ministry in your life. You must respect His relevance in your life. This is very important. Very, very important. I can never be close to you if you do not communicate to me that I am needed in your life. Is that true? How many of you have found yourself restraining yourself from certain people and friends because they act every time you are around as though you are a you are a what? You are a pest. Is that true? Have you seen people like that? Even when there is fire falling on their head, you say, let it fall. The last time I went there, they treated me like a dog. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is God. Make sure you write it. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not the first man. The Holy Spirit is God in all the fullness. So you must be able to respect and be prepared to receive his ministry. I learned that from Benny Hinn. Till today, when Benny Hinn stands upon his crusade stage with hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people, he gives acknowledgement. You know what it means to acknowledge a man? Go for occasions and you find out that if there are dignitaries seated around, they don't start the occasion proper until you acknowledge them. In our midst here is so, 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 and so, and then they say a little bit about the man. 
he was able to do this and while they are doing that the man is excited he's happy and there are ushers already standing close to him say ladies and gentlemen please make welcome this and that and his lovely wife and two of them try to pretend i don't want to go and they say please sir we must we love you too much this seat was made for you and you are acknowledging them and the amount the man did not plan to give he will give it because he was acknowledged the bible says in all your ways acknowledge it didn't say talk to him many of us talk to god but we don't acknowledge him hallelujah do you respect the holy spirit or do you just believe in him i respect his ministry there is an invisible person brothers and sisters that stands close to me take that person away from me two weeks two weeks joshua selman is dead people will keep asking what happened maybe he has gone to babala or maybe the charm was not renewed everything has backfired the presence of the spirit i'm not embarrassed listen and let me use this to teach you the secret of friendship for many of you everybody you come close to runs away from you let me tell you what is wrong now it's not necessarily demon it's because your life creates a picture that trivializes the importance of people in your life the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly if i come to your room and you are frowning because you want to put food and i'm full it's not even that i want to eat but the way you are frowning you are creating a body language that tells me you serve now for you you know you think i'll come there again but when i come and you celebrate me you show genuinely from your heart that if i were to come hundred times you will still receive me a time will come when i will make my habitation in your house there that's what happened to the prophet remember the prophet and the shunammite woman every time he passed when the woman saw him she she made table she studied the things that he liked she put a table for him because she noticed he was always receiving from god and writing and the prophet was so amazed a time came when she even created a room for him and she was blessed do you make room for the spirit you get up in the morning you get up in a whole week and you don't care about him you don't talk to him and then sometimes we come for koinonia and people just tell a lot of lies you are the love of my life ha, love of your life of your life not even of your day of your life i wouldn't trade you for silver or gold i was teaching in a ministry and i said hold on do you know what silver and gold is silver and gold can change your life and your family wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my heir. as a lady when you are singing your husband will just be looking at you you are my everything okay and now see the reason why you don't cook for me again you are not faithful can you give the holy spirit your all can you let him know that i have no ministry without you this is what i tell him in the secret place i say lord people love me today because you love me if i reject you that's the same thing that will happen my life is a reflection of the honor i give to him every time i honor him i find out that people honor me every time i find out that my honor for him is dwindling i see it happen in my life and i run for a retreat quickly hallelujah when you dishonor the holy spirit your life will reflect that dishonor because the glory that keeps you honorable fades away hallelujah see i respect the spirit of god yes i do I do i respect him i honor him i don't just believe in him i've had the opportunity to preach in crusades and meetings and conferences and so many meetings i'm week after week i'm traveling from end to end of this nation preaching and doing mighty things for the kingdom and in every one of these meetings, he has not left me without a witness how could i reject him 
everyone people send me text messages they say a lot of things joshua selman thank you your messages are changing lives your messages are doing this and that and in my mind i say our message holy spirit they just don't know you know that song um what's it they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me listen if someone has volunteered to pay your school fees the day you hear the person is sick with a terminal disease what will you do you will run like your life depends on it your school fees is at stake is that true the holy spirit is the key to my relevance if people ever clap for me it's because of him so as they clap for me i only become an usher and i say holy spirit you are the one who deserves it when i stand and i speak i don't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time but as i speak he's the one who touches people his power he makes his power manifest he's the force behind the messages of this ministry that you hear and it does something to you you cannot explain how could i ignore him how could i ignore him based on what what you see in my life is a reflection of his glory if you ignore the holy spirit you have ignored beauty and glory from your life if you have ignored the holy spirit listen god is speaking to us here we started last week many of us have truly ignored the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia many of us have become so busy you have become a business mogul now you have partners in abuja and and lagos and abroad and china you are now a great man you are now a five pointer you nail it at will there's no need for the holy spirit again you are now married no need for crying or dropping any prayer request for life partner and there's no reason to seek him again we must get to that point where we create a secret place every time i listen to mike mudok he takes time to honor the holy spirit and he does it generously from the depths of his heart ladies imagine how your husband will feel when you come up and before you preach you take 10 quality minutes and you just shower honor say i'm a queen because he's a king Aye. i'm married because he married me ah the man is there managing all of the blessings that are coming as soon as you finish that car that i wanted to buy you say um honey what did you even say you wanted listen many i'm i see it looks like i'm using everyday joke but i'm telling you this is the secret and can i tell you something brothers and sisters the reason why many people are disgraced in public is because they embarrass the holy spirit in secret if you honor him in secret he will never forget you in public many people come on stage the power of god is going to move i came all the way to let you see what god will do and we chorus all sorts of things and get angry at the people you don't have faith open now receive what we are meaning is try you know all sorts of things we lay hands on people twisting their head up and down and they say ah let me just fall this man will kill me brothers and sisters the absence of intimacy is always clear you can't fake it hallelujah every time hold this mic you hear the voice of two people it's just that it has been woven into one that's the reason why i can be talking to you outside you see that generally but once it is time to come into that office that releases our oneness you will hear another voice hmm. so every time you come to touch me you are touching two people joshua selman is a man but there is the holy spirit standing behind Hiya. when it's time to lay hands on the sick he tells me remember we're in the secret place remember the things that i taught you and so together we lay that hand and while my hand is there's, there's nothing to it but when his hand comes upon your hand, aye, suddenly 
it, it happens as if you are playing but then it's as real as anything sister when the holy ghost comes upon your life he amplifies your beauty there is a level of beauty that people they know there is something about you it's not like you are the finest lady everywhere but they are seeing the beauty that it that is interfacing both the physical and the spirit realm the brother talks to you and he cannot sleep again he knows he spoke to two people hallelujah and so you greet someone and you tell the person god bless you and that word comes with an anointing because there is another personality say i am never alone say it again i am never alone there is a personality that walks with me that talks with me see if you carry this mindset if you carry this mindset it will change your life oh i'm never alone he said yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me for you are with me when i go for meetings and i see sick people and i see hungry people hungry for the things of god and i see stubborn people there are people that when you see in a meeting if the holy ghost is not with you start crying because you say in jesus name they are not even answering amen you see you they are as complicated as whatever you know you are in for a surprise it's at that time you can lean on the strength of one who is greater than you and you know that the holy spirit is going to do something in their lives and someone sometimes when i see people who come for koinonia you know when i follow the the, the pictures you see the person who came you know that someone brought him because he's even surprised he's just standing outside and wondering and you know this person does not even know why he came the ability of the spirit have you ignored the ministry of the holy spirit in your life this has nothing to do with just ministry it has to do with every area of your life so you must respect his ministry the holy ghost is a gentle man the limit to which you allow him to come into your life is the limit to which he remains. Revelations 3.20. Let's hurry up. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy, potent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Let's sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome this place holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy potent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in He says behold i stand he was writing to the seven churches they were already saved this is not a scripture for sinners he was writing to the seven churches in asia minor but he said behold i stand like a guy comes to propose to a lady you can't just grab a lady and say you are my wife forget about those things they used to do before you are my wife and you know behold i come and i stand i seek intimacy I seek intimacy but I will not bump into your life because you have a will you can choose to reject me and I will go are you getting my point now he said behold I stand as mighty as I am I'm able to change your life but I stand he says and I knock if any man hear my voice that means you can be so distracted you do not even hear his voice but if for any reason you hear my voice and what 
open the door what does it mean to open the door receive my ministry consider it that i am relevant enough consider it that without me you will lose relevance without me there's no spiritual power without me you will struggle that i am able to bring beauty and glory out of your life out of your church out of your fellowship consider it that you don't need to relocate what you need is not to come closer to the people jesus was on the mountain crowds came in the desert crowds came all these excuses we give there are various ways of explaining the consequences of the absence of koinonia if my church was in abuja people would have come i know that if i had money i would have paid for everything i would have done beautiful backdrop it's a lie it's a lie there is a presence that draws people it's called anakazo it's a compelling power of the spirit believe what i'm telling you no human being can resist it no matter how stubborn you are listen this is the power that created the heavens and the earth this is the power that raised christ from the dead oh no you are too small to resist it when the ministry of the holy spirit is allowed and permitted in a church in a building you will see supernatural things that will amaze you the reason why things look very difficult in churches and ministries is because we have boxed the holy spirit we are embarrassed to tell the people that he is greater than us we are threatened like two business partners who have begun to fight themselves young gicho wrote a book the secret of his building the seven hundred thousand city in show he wrote that book i read that book years ago holy spirit my senior partner he wrote another book the fourth dimension there is more to this man you see i'm not so smart in myself come on now ah. but there is one who can bring beauty and glory out of your life but he's standing tonight listen he's knocking you've struggled all your life to be relevant man of god you have struggled you've told lies with miracles that didn't happen because of the absence of his presence and he's saying there is no need you can get into the real thing you have exaggerated the number of your church members because you are embarrassed you have said all kinds of things competing with people he's saying there is no need i can give you something authentic sister you have envied everybody you can see and the holy spirit is saying there's no need there is beauty and glory ah, yeah. he's called the spirit of glory he does something to you do you know that the holy spirit can alter your physical form your physical biological form there is there is there is a depth how many of you have seen a man who gets married to his wife and after four or five years they start looking like one another is that true it even happens to some even from relationship before they get married you say ah oh boy when did you start becoming fair say that's none of your business oneness participation how many of you have seen pastors of certain ministries look like their ministers and you know they did not try to cook it up something happened it looks like their physical appearance were altered that's what happened to the apostles in acts the book of acts they looked like jesus that's what happened to peter when they saw peter they said no peter your talk betrays you it tells you you have been peter said woman me i've not been with jesus but he had been so into oneness that even when he wanted to run away he could not he had taken up the language the character let me tell you something about oneness with the spirit let's see my dear when you become one with the holy spirit see when a spirit comes to walk with a man the spirit begins to live out its characteristics through that man just like a demon spirit right there was a spirit and it was the posture of that spirit the woman who was bound for 18 years as you when you are praying for people and 
you know during deliverance sessions you see people acting like animals and acting like snakes because the spirit that oppresses them is trying to manifest its characteristic through their faculties so when you walk with the spirit without struggle that is the real revelation of grace you start seeing the love of god at work in you are you seeing the point now there are times that the holy spirit is grieved about certain things and you start crying physically because you are now you have there is a sharing together he can pour into you his burden hallelujah there are times that the holy ghost is excited so you are praying in tongues we we'll talk about that you are praying in the secret place and the holy spirit sees that you have entered the realm of victory you cannot see it and he starts rejoicing and you start laughing you see now you have not seen it but because you are one he starts letting you share in the victory that's why when a sick body is healed the holy ghost doesn't just appear and say all right stand let me shine congregation i am the one you are the only one who is left that is your own benefit of coming into oneness and so people look and your face are on posters and billboards and people say this is the great man and you who because you have wisdom you run back and say spirit of god i'm not foolish we are together it's the biggest secret that i've learned the ministry of the holy spirit let everything in my life give way if you leave me with the holy spirit you have not done anything to me hallelujah a great man of god apostle johnson suleiman i've shared the story here i'll share it again he was praying at a particular point and a great politician came to see him very noble man and so when he came one hour the man of god was still praying two hours he was just in the room three hours the wife got a bit embarrassed his daughter got a bit embarrassed and she went to knock and then he opened the door and she entered and she was like daddy this man Abba, attend to him let him go and he looked at her he said my daughter sit down he said you know why this man is here he's here because of my relationship with the holy spirit if i leave my relationship with the holy spirit because of him he will never return again let him wait there are many of us as koinonia is like this when we see certain dignified people we cannot worship in the presence of god because we're embarrassed the one who makes the world clap for you if you run away from him now are you not foolish because they will not clap again the one who has made you a celebrity the one who took you from the wilderness some of us we know where we are coming from hallelujah look how he's brought beauty and glory out of your life i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord See, my mom sent me a text my mom sent me a text that blessed me so much you know what she told me in the text um, she's with her husband in Lagos and they sent me a text her now she said she calls me her father so she said my father make sure you don't buy a car with tinted glasses because police people will disturb you I hope you take note of that bless you or love you or whatever it is I said ah you know what it means for a mother to be so confident that her son is a success she knows that if i'm not going to go and carry any kind of thing and manage she's advising me in advance she said buy a, don't buy a car with tinted glass that's a level of trust and confidence are you getting my point can that be your testimony can your father look at you and say son i know you will build a house for me please when you are building it can you make the kitchen a bit larger and he knows you are not going to say are you joking one plot of land no hallelujah i remember years ago someone met me and we we're talking about purpose and destiny a good friend of mine and he told me something he said sir i'm more confident about your life than i am about my own life it's not he's not in so he's just saying when i look at you i can guarantee that you will be a success even more than i can guarantee my own success and I told him, change it. Change it. There is a revelation you can have. John 14, 17. 
John 14, 17. Everyone say after me, Holy Spirit, I open up myself. Say it seriously, Holy Spirit, I open up myself to the fullness of your ministry, to the multifaceted dimensions of your ministry. He said, even the spirit of truth, he said the world cannot do what? That means there are people who do not receive this spirit. The world cannot receive him because it's yet him not, neither knoweth him. He said, For you, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. Allos Paracletos, the helper. When the Holy Ghost comes into your life, he helps you. There are things he does not do for you, but he assists you. Let's rush. What are the components of true fellowship? Number one, the study of the word. The study of the word. These are the things you do in that secret place. The components that make up true fellowship, koinonia with the spirit. Number one, the study of the word. If you claim you are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you don't at least have a commitment, if, even if you don't have a desire, you must have a commitment. Because there are times you may not have a desire, but you must have the commitment. Are you getting my point? Mm. There are times, listen, there are times you may not have the desire to study. Just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class, but you have the commitment. Praise God. What is the relevance of studying the word? It gives us an understanding of the ways of God it gives us an understanding of the ways of God, the thoughts of God, and the mindset of God. Hmm. We must study the word of God. Contained in this book. Listen, when you listen to my teachings or you read my books, for instance, in that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? A book is simply a documentation of persuasions. When I'm persuaded about a philosophy or an idea or a pattern of thought, I document it. So when you study my books, it is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much. You have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force saddam hussein and all of these people adolf hitler they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty but look at jesus he made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it, we would be able to align to it. Are you getting my point? The word of God, the, the Greek word for word there is logos. And, and it's translated thoughts. The thoughts of a man. Printed. The thoughts, the thinking pattern of a man. And Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this. It said, let this mind let this mindset let this ideology let this frame of work this plane of judgment let it be in you which was also in christ and the word christ is christos the spirit of god hallelujah let this mind be in you that means there is a mindset everybody say mindset everybody say programming the word of god does something to you i've shared this if i if I pick, come my dear. You are a microbiology, right? Biochemistry. This is a biochemist, for instance. Watch this. Some years ago, this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry. Is that true? But there was a curriculum, is that true? That had been created with the goal of transforming her. Did they change her body? Did they injure her? They just passed her a system for a period of time and the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree so the word of god is his school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern 
It's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual. The word of God is his thought, his mindset, his ideology. Bless you, my dear. So all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich, money doesn't grow on trees. Hoard as much as you can hoard. Cheat everybody. Kill if it's possible. But then when you explore the mind of God, the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom, you will find out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Now you are in conflict. There are two mindsets. Are you getting my point now? And when you submit to the word of God, you have permitted. The word let means permit. Permit this mind. Hallelujah. So culturally, you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people, then you become the big boss. Ah! And then you come and you study that when you come into Christ, there is a new law. There is a new operation of love that works in you. Hallelujah. Everybody say the word of God reveals to me God's ideologies, God's perspective. And then it also reveals to you God's opinion about every matter. There are many opinions, brothers and sisters. The word of God reveals to you God's opinion. I'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us. Come, Shay. Listen. If I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say, just tell me. Uh -uh. The word of God. It, as a young man, you want to get married. Are you getting my point now? Culturally, you are taught, just go to the village, carry anybody that is available, save Johnny, flog it out in the marriage. Yeah, after all, you are the man. Eventually, you will survive. Two of you will be f tired of fighting and you will now sit down on the round table to discuss how to move your home forward. That's a cultural way. But according to scripture, number one, you know that it's God's will for you to marry. Male and female, he created them. Not two males, not two females. Male and female. So it is very clear that you have, God did not create a man and a whale. So if you find out that you are having desire for fish to marry, you know that you need to run for miracle service. There's something wrong. Listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of God. See that? If you find out you're having a desire for another man or another lady, you know that you need help. Quick. Quick. Either a retreat or prayer. Anyone. You need it quick. Now watch this. I'm showing you how the mindset of God affects you, right? When you now go to study the Bible, I'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down. And the Bible says, for this cause shall a man, not a boy. So the first question is, what makes a man? I I'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of God. And he said, shall a man leave his father and mother? That means he must be independent. And there are several things that bring for independent responsibility some level of financial security some level of mental stability are you seeing how i'm building on god's mindset leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife not his wife and other concubines his wife right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then i study from god's word he said children are a heritage from the lord not a product of a man and a woman they are heritage from the lord so i bend to the mindset of god whereas i'm the kind of person that claims i'm a hot guy yo i can never do this all this nonsense that we carry from different cultures and you now come i'm this in our village ladies kneel down and lie down and lick our leg in our village when ladies cook soup is in one plate food is in one plate you now submit to the word of god you either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset choose ye this day the bible says that means you can choose are you getting my point now and I say, lady, when you make up your mind and say, no, me, I'm not going to do anything. No, any man that I will give it to him. I'm not, I'm not cooking for any man. I'm this and that. We are women. I'm independent. I have my own rights too. Then you 
read wives you first ask yourself am i a wife with this noise i'm making you see that because if you are not a wife he was not talking to you you can continue doing what you are doing but if you are a wife the bible says submit to your husband in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you're one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you man you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stinks your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else What is my confidence? What, what assurance do I have that I'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me? He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, they are thoughts of good. You see the word thoughts again? My mindset towards you. This mindset that I propose to you. Like a man comes to meet a lady and says, look, I will take care of you. If you go with me in this journey, forget about what you see now. We are soaking Gary, but at the, the end is peace. That's what God is doing with his word. Right? He's bringing you a proposal. And he's saying, look, look, look how your mindset has made your life. The quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies. Can you bend and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now Number two, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come in open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be part. I never study my Bible as if i'm doing a bible quiz or competition many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions so when you start studying you now come and meet your friend and say i finished colossians today i was just going through it i even started Ephesians. how has it changed your life who cares who cares whether you read the book no listen don't be under pressure it is not spirituality to say i finished my bible 20 times if we cannot see the fruit in your life it's like saying i know jonathan every day you are telling us you know jonathan and we are still in the same level we say oh god you are lying somewhere you are lying somewhere because we know the way even jonathan's house boy is you are shouting every time jonathan is my 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 father's brother if not because of situation i would have grown in his house you are telling at a point in time we we'll know that you are telling a lie that's how it is so every time if you speak i'm a word addict i'm studying the word yet we are not seeing your life 
you are the first to get angry you are the first to slap people you are the first to insult people you are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit we know you have not been with god there is an absence of koinonia listen there are parameters that can measure if the word of god is growing in you the measure of the word of god in you is the measure of the lordship of christ in your life are you getting my point he said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed so i see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of god that is the degree to which jesus has become lord in your life experientially hallelujah take your time and study the word of god listen you must be strategic about your studying the word of god every day we have devotionals to help us here but you don't have all the time to study the word of god for eight hours every day that's not how to grow that's a religious way there are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure i don't study the word of god like that every day i look at there are times i get up in the morning there's no time for anything i have so much activities but i dedicate periodic times when i stay with the word of god intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the world and applying it in my life. How have you been studying your word? So that you can quote. Some of us even have some Bible memory aids that help us. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who threatened me. Uh, this and that and that. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jeremiah chapter this and that. Da, 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 da. And people say, whoa, whoa. Your life is not changing. You are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men. But because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy, it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit. I'm not against Bible recitation. If you stay with a man so much, you should be able to know his words. Your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two. The components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to manifest Himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere. His manifest presence, His omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalmist says. But he's manifest his revealed presence. That he reveals himself for the purpose of communion. It doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. That was your day. What do you think the lady would do? The lady will say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? There is always a preparation. Because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart. He will dress the place, he will arrange it. If she likes red flowers, somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way buy red buy anything that looks like red it may be even the ox blood to him is red at least he tried he will bring it and arrange something and says i did this for you i prepared this place this is your own place sit down many of us do not know that there is a geography where god meets with men you can set up an altar a meeting place solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said oh lord let this be your resting place wherever people are if they turn to jerusalem and pray hearken to them hallelujah you can make your house or your room an altar there are people here in this church building you see them in the night they come some of them pray there are some of us our rooms there are some of us certain places some toilets some garages it doesn't matter where 
people just lock themselves somewhere and just say lord i have come to fellowship and you just sing songs of worship i love you lord and i lift my hands that's fellowship koinonia to worship you and you're luring him with your worship because he cannot resist worship oh my soul rejoice take joy my king and your phone is ringing and you leave it there it's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there in what you hear the devil is saying huh? keep singing you will finish singing and eat your fingers let it be a sweet and he's watching he's watching he's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence priority sister you are just singing i love you lord and prince charming is flashing ha! your body abel wants to worship Cain is saying you, you better call now that things are working for you you have been praying and submitting prayer requests. This guy is already being nice now. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Anything you love above the secret place is an idol. I don't care what it is. Abraham took his son son i love you but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because god tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it is the same thing as trading your bed right for a pot of soup soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry When I'm spending time with God, let the whole world catch fire. Let it catch fire. It's amazing how the devil can create so much distractions. There are some of us who, when we come to the presence of God, that's the time to ping. You just see a lady's hair. Say, that's the hair I've been talking to you about. Let me snap it quickly. And you become a commentator on WhatsApp and what do you call it? All those things. And the devil knows when to disturb you. He waits until it's time for the presence. It's time for you to fellowship with the spirit. He now brings up all sorts of things. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, Come before him with singing. That is the protocol of his presence. Sing to the spirit. Many of you don't sing. Every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship. It's a secret of the anointing. That's why you see us take our time. That's why you see these people standing. You don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend. I'm on stage and they're on stage with me, even if it's for 10 hours. And the keyboard is playing. Why? Because he's worshiping. We are creating the atmosphere. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The prophet knew this. And so he said, bring me a mistrial. I need, I cannot talk. I need to bring because the Holy Spirit was not resident in them. He would come and he said there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence. That's what we do during our traditional festivals. You see some people who just tie some things around and they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools. And when the spirit they are calling finally arrives, you will know it has arrived. Confusion, accidents, all sorts of things. Registering his presence, I'm here. You ask for it in India. Many of you have watched them, they blow flutes and they sing, and those serpents begin to come out, and people come to watch. Music is a law of spiritual operation, it's not just a principle. That's why, when you listen to all these classical musics, orchestras, you know, and, and all this contemporary worship, they do something to your spirit. I have a bad voice so what you are not presenting a special number it's called the secret place even if you are not called into the ministry of worship god is not complaining he loves it the way it is sing any song compose your own song hallelujah 
have you seen a lady in love and the guy said i want to sing for you because his friend said that's what i did and the guy is not a good musician he doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song he's mixing words he's just singing all sorts of songs and because the lady loves she's saying wow you mean you learned this song today and the guy is saying you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal and he's making all sorts of mistakes listen i'm showing you something about some of you it has happened to you that's why you're laughing you are seeing how this guy is doing his best he's even closing his eyes he's communicating his passion on a very good day you would have gotten up to work but you appreciate that's how the holy ghost is he's not complaining he's not complaining we can tell you here that your voice is not good but when you are in the sea go off key go up go down sing bass sing anything is you and him it's called koinonia there are not many people invited he not them that dwell in the secret the secret place is not a congregation it's a place where you meet it's a love affair it's an intercourse it's called koinonia dance with me remember our song lover of my soul to the song of all songs this is to the Holy Spirit. Would you dance with me, O oh, lover of my soul? To the song of all songs. Let's sing one more time. I'm making you fall in love with him. Dance with me, O oh, of my soul to the song of all songs. Listen, listen, listen. And while you are singing this song, suddenly his Shekinah fills the room. You know he's in that place. I mean, your whole body is shaking. This guy is responding. Your, your love song is attracting him. And you're just shaking. And you're wondering. Scriptures are just coming in your mind. And as that is happening, God is talking to people. Bless him. Bless her. Favor him. All that is happening in the secret place. There are sicknesses and challenges there are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying oh lord about this cgpa i just saw my cgpa five carryovers and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing it brings him and that song begins to comfort you whereas you were crying about something after meeting with him you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king you have a challenge in your life you are struggling with a habit you are struggling with something and you go to his presence and you begin to sing and say lord something else is taking your place in my life and i'm reporting to you i'm a faithful bride i'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life i'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place and as a jealous god like a man who is fighting for his bride he will come and say let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Listen, there is not there are people when you tell secrets about your life, you are in trouble. It's as you would have just gone to nta and announce to the whole world because they will tell everybody that they just don't tell anybody the next person will tell sister b say i did i don't know you if anything happens i've never met you but the holy ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain i don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason the holy spirit will never quarrel you you come with your weaknesses broken you come with all sorts of things when men reject you when that guy says you're good for nothing you refuse to sleep with me go you coming back to the secret place that's the place of strength men of god who do not have the secret place when persecution starts and now see the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution if you are not a man of the secret place you will never last 
men will question the source of your anointing men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this men will question all kinds of things when men shout and people oh you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages i wish so i wish so when i get all those things i look forward to my hour of prayer and i just go into his presence and i lie down flat the one who can love me the way i am men will tell you you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the Holy Spirit. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place. And if you don't find it, you don't say yes to him. So when one brother comes because he likes you, he now wears suit and comes for koinonia. When he's talking to you, you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked. And you say, my brother, you talk like you're a Christian, but I don't see that signature. Meaning you are not a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. Worship. Do you, do you spend time? I'm telling you, when I'm in the presence of God, I'm not Apostle Joshua Selman. I throw away all of those things and I roll before him and I cry like a baby. And this is how I prepare for meetings. Brothers and sisters, this is how I prepare for meetings. I talk to the Lord and I say, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down, in my mind i'm saying okay holy spirit worship team is now ministering we are ready to go and i can just feel him saying go 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 and do it prove to the people that you are not alone ah! and as he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and it pain me because i know the brother i said such a virtuous lady so you are already trying to you've not gotten married but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away that's the same thing you will do when you get married but the holy ghost he will give you a garment you want stain it outside when you come you see him holding soap already waiting for you while you are trying to explain he says there's no need that you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel to the song of all song can we sing this song just once as i prepare to round up would you dance with me Just the voices, just one more time, from the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? The third component of intimacy with the Holy Ghost is prayer. The first is the study of the word. The second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship. God blesses you by a keyboard. God blesses you by a guitar. 
are you getting my point even if it's only one key learn it cfg and the minor just sit down and lie down that's all you know you are not learning it to sing somewhere one day people will come and listen to you i remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called ambassage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in Danfodio, and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve would just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room when you see a man of the secret he's ever looking young it's not about eating well he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither you see a man of 60 years 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is if it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long something happens to you do you believe me absolutely prayers especially praying in the spirit Praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion. Many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged. I came from an orthodox background and I understand what it means. I went to a, a seminary and I, I have touched different orthodox circles. So I understand the way Pentecostals taught it was a terrible way nobody would they, 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 they and and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the holy spirit came upon people he made them idiots they did not teach us that tongues was a mystery it was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion it's a secret code of communication we were not taught like that I'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand anything. The man was teaching, I was feeling like sleeping. The only thing I know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs and he said, that's it, praying in understanding tongues. That's all I remember. And then we sang one song. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Give him the glory that he deserves. That's all. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I started praying in tongues, I was wondering. I said, ah, oh God, I hope I'm not just joining everybody and lying. Maybe they received the real thing. Because some people were falling. Me, I didn't fall. Nothing happened, but I was praying at least. I doubted that thing for days. But I began to see transformation in my life. In JS2, I was made the timekeeper of the whole school. There was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy, quarter to five, every day the Holy Ghost would wake me, physically. Someone would tap me, quarter to five, quarter to five. We had a matron called Miss Rhoda, wonderful woman. She's gone to be with the Lord now. One day, when I woke up, five on the dot, I would ring the bell. She called me and laid hands. She said, you are an exceptional person. I would study just once. I'm serious. I never have to read again. Once. It was supernatural. Then we started one, one prayer evening meeting called Operation Catacruz. <laughs> we were tired of the nonsense that was happening around. So we, myself and five guys, we were like the apostles of the school five of us very small we did wonderful things wonderful things one of them was a sickler he was like our peter and all through that time that that devil of infirmity left oh we did mighty things i prayed for people who were stammerers and all of a sudden the stammer the stammering will leave i
for us it was not a big deal because nobody taught us that this thing was great you need honorarium you're a great man no we just did our thing and then at a point they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching they brought a lot of people they taught and we knew it was us they were talking to and then eventually we threw away all these things of god it was something in my spirit and when we threw away all those things it was in less than two months our leader died i was with him the final moment in the hospital his ribs were swollen that sickness came back what he was delivered from they were born triplets one died there's only one who is alive now and i looked at him in the hospital i told him don't worry you'll be fine little did i know that that would be the last time because we ignored the ministry of the holy spirit i cried one day many years when i realized that that was the reason we left him we actually asked him to walk out of our lives take your place take your place i will never ask you to walk out of my life take your place take your place that gentleman died most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things i tell you many of them today some of them are drunkards some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know the holy spirit blah 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 fear to break out of your comfort zone fear to take giant kingdom steps that one is a spirit god has not given us that kind of spirit but of love of power and of a sound mind number two disobedience listen look at me uncontrolled helpless disobedience in the life of a man is a classic bible proof that you need help what is disobedience the inability to comply the inability to take advantage of the grace of god and comply with the instructions and the terms of the spirit the terms of the kingdom that that inability is not just about refusing many people who disobey do not want to is that true they don't want to go and meet somebody who smokes when he has finished everything and just sits down you say ah john why now say oh boy me too I've, I've tried disobedience is a spirit i'm going to show you from scripture ephesians 2 verse 2 how many disobedient believers do we have ephesians 2 verse 2 thank you jesus in in which in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that works in who the sons of disobedience when people walk in disobedience perpetually the extension of disobedience is what we call rebellion stubbornness all of these things are extensions of the manifestation of that spirit so you tell the lady sit down say me i must go out today have you seen people who all they want to know is the rule that has been set so that they will break it? They are like that. They just want to know what did they say we should not do? They say don't talk to these people. Say today. Even if it's this fence. You see them around secondary schools. They just put a rule. They say from today no jumping this fence. The guys will start looking at the person they know will break the rule. And you will be laughing. He will put himself under pressure to disobey. It's a spirit. It's a spirit for God's sake. There are people whose head is as strong. You are talking to them. They are listening to you like this. Already they have disobeyed you before you finish talking. Will you do this? Yes. Will you sit down? Yes. As soon as you leave, they are doing some. It's a spirit. Many, please parents, listen. If you are a parent here, listen to me. This is the mystery behind the rebellion of many of our children. The protocol will bear me witness. Last week, a woman was tired of her child. I'm sure maybe she's here with the boy tired of her son and just carried the boy and said let's go for counseling when they entered the woman sat down she didn't waste time no beating around the bush this is the boy i brought 
You know, look, when mothers get tired, fathers are logical. They wouldn't take steps first. They want to look, how is my reputation going to be affected? Mothers say, let's go. When they sat down, it was in, in less than five minutes, this boy was free, but he was a spirit. Hallelujah. Please, are you getting this now? This is not supposed to make you hate people. It is the biblical revelation that can help you to love people. See, agape functions from the standpoint of a revelation. You must know something higher than somebody's stupidity to love him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not this teaching about agape. They just say, just love. No, you can't just love. If you are stealing my thing, why should I love you? Until I have a higher revelation that is greater than your act. So it gives me the impetus to love even when you do not deserve. Are you getting my point? So we put pressure on people in church. They say, just love. What is there? Are you the first person they stole your thing? Ha. The person is saying, do you know the pain I'm having? I say, just love. It's like that. It works for everybody. It's not like that. I'm telling you this night. Love is a function of a revelation. That's why the Bible says it has heights. It has depth. It has dimensions. There is a revelation that when you have, you can love even when people do not merit it. And they'll look at you and say, ah, ah, come. Why is Steve still loving this person? And you know that you are functioning from a light that is higher than that which people see. It was on account of that that Jesus looked at the people who were killing him and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Look at the other two thieves that were hanging. What did they say? Same cross. What did they say? The other one even turned to Jesus and said, Now, wow, we are here, you are here. On the cross. Still not taking responsibility on the cross. He was on the cross. He stole. They caught two of them. They said, This night we are going to crucify two of you. Agreed, agreed. Now they are on the cross and he's blaming Jesus. Praise God. Disobedience. Everybody lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. The workings of disobedience leaves my life from today. See, you do not know how powerful the word of God is until your obedience is complete. Are you getting me? Our disobedience is what makes it look like God is not able to help us. Please believe what I'm saying. Number three, classic manifestation of the presence of spirits. Anger or what we call rage. Rage. Let's talk about this one moment. Anger. Everybody say anger. Please look at me. When you see someone or you have uncontrolled anger, there are people who can kill you when they are angry. Then later on say, ah, have you seen people like that? Some of our fathers especially. And I'll tell you why this anger thing is in our fathers. Because, you see, the beauty of any man's life is to make sure he's able to provide and protect his family. If you cannot provide and protect, you are not a man. doesn't matter how many children you can give birth to. You get the point? The Bible gives us what, it says any man that cannot cater, not any man that cannot give birth to children, whether male or female, that's not the issue. Protection and provision is God's biblical lead most test to test genuine manhood you see that protection provision that's why as a father he models that so if your life makes him look irresponsible he's telling you there is a problem because any man that cannot cater for his family the bible says is worse than an infidel are, are you getting my point now so anger when you are frustrated by trying all the principles you know to try and it's not bringing the result and there are pressures. Do you know, statistically, some of you who are medical people will agree with me, there are more men with stroke and high blood pressure. Is that true? And blood-related diseases. When there is no school fees, when there is no this, the landlord is chasing the family and all of that away and running, everybody is running. The children look at the mother because they are usually closer to the mother. The mother now looks like the father. The father is angry because he can't look at anybody now. So he looks back at them in a way that will force them to shift their face. Oh, yeah, hey, what? Are you not seeing what we are doing? Frustration. That's why it's better to listen to this thing before you get married. Believe me. It's a big advantage. 
big advantage. Are you following what I'm saying now? Many of us just find out, oh, I'm old. Kai, time is going. I must marry. I give myself two months. God, if you are faithful, God is saying, calm down. Just listen to this series they are teaching you. God, I must... <laughs> See, Bishop is enjoying his marriage through, through knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anger. Anger. Many people have refused to be promoted regardless of their fasting and prayer because of anger. Many relationships are scattered because of anger. One day the guy just looks at the lady, removes his belt, beats the living daylight out of her. And later on, say, I just wanted to, to know that I was not myself. The lady said, That's the sign that I don't have any business. Who was there? I need to know the other person. You were not yourself. That means you cannot be yourself another day. I'm not doing. You see that? Or the lady sees the guy speaking and say, Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Maybe it's his younger sister. You just carry her seat, turn your hand, and say, I will lose, and you will lose. These are spirits. Let me tell you how you know it's a spirit. At the end of it, the person regrets it. And sometimes the people are even shocked. They cannot believe that they are the ones who did what they did. Hallelujah. I remember one guy years ago, the mom cursed him and she told him something. She said, you will stop stealing the day rat. Stop stealing. <laughs> true story. True story. If it's just a story I'm forming, I will tell you. Bring that guy out of the prison. In two weeks, he's going back. They were used to him. When he comes, they say, pass, just go. Nobody's asking any question. Because there was a spirit. Get the gravity of disobedience. Disobedience is not just refusing to comply to instruction. There is something that forces you to violate your own values. It's called the spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. That's what can make a man of God collect bribe. They are forming a crusade and you say, ah, this, let's give bribe. And the person forgets he's a man of God. That's what can pressure somebody to do malpractice. After praying in tongues, he say, hi, this thing is too hot, too hot. Let me just, whoever can help me, I will talk to God later on. See, it's the workings of, please get this very seriously. I used to trivialize disobedience till the day God opened my eyes. Because I will soon teach us that you are only ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Anger. How many of us have been suffering from anger? Anger. Deep rage. Anger. I remember a man who beat his son. Beat his son to an extent that wires enter the boy's body. Stripped the boy naked, oh, tied him, and was just allowing these demons to vent anger. And you know, at such times, the mother cannot come. She wants to talk, say, I will join you and this boy and tie two of you together and show you I prayed your dowry in full. You see, all these kind of statements. Say, I refuse anger. See, if this is all you need to get to finish the year, it's enough. Are you getting me? Anger. Many of us, especially ladies, anger. Anger. You get angry at everything. Oh, it's pissing me off. It's this, this off. We have all kinds of satanic dictions that we have brought to explain this predicament. I'm telling you now, it's a spirit. Stop you cannot be fighting with 20 people. The problem is you. If you don't humble yourself, why is it that everyone that comes around my life, we must fight? Something is wrong. Take responsibility tonight. And when it's time to pray, pray seriously. And say, enough is enough. Anger has cheated many of us. We have lost relationships. We have lost opportunities. There are many men of God that would have experienced increased thief. There are some people I would never invite to this pulpit even if their ministry is raising the dead. Because they will transfer all kinds of wrong spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
There are many, you see a beautiful brother, a sister, lovely lady, virtuous lady, but anger. Do you know what the Bible has to say about anger? It says it's better, how did he put it in the book of Proverbs? It's better to, to sleep. How many of you have tried sleeping on a roof? I've slept on speaker and amplifier, but I've not slept on a roof. To sleep on a roof than to stay with a woman who is full of rage. It's a terrible thing. Look at what the Bible used to compare that kind of spirit. Hallelujah. I know a woman, I was told that, I was told, not, not that I know her, I was told the story, that she took a knife and put red hot fire. I tell the truth, God is my witness. And she took that thing and pressed the ears of her child. Say, you are stubborn. I will give you this mark so that forever, but did it change the child? That's what will make the child, when he becomes 13 years, his first assignment is to buy a gun. He will buy one small locally made pistol. This one that hunters use. One day when the mother talks, you say, today, one of us will die. And you see, he will kill the mother. And people will not understand the story. They'll say, such a kind woman in church, bar because she was giving. You see, the terrible thing about anger is that it does not show itself everywhere. So some people will never agree that this person is suffering from. How can you call this our elder? This loving man. When he comes up, they say such a humble man. This guy has such a character and then he will kneel down as they are even talking. But this is the man that is killing his wife at home. That's why when you go and meet the pastor and say, pastor, there is trouble. The pastor says a lie. You people are just being lousy. Anger is a spirit. It's a spirit. Are you getting my point? Other spirits, lust and the rest and all of this, they stem from these three things. Fear, disobedience, anger. That's why when you are casting out devils, notice every time they manifest, the first thing is anger. They just get angry. There is no joy with Satan, brothers and sisters. No joy at all. Forget that thing that musicians try to show you that hey, it's a nice thing, hell is this, they drop, it's, it's a lie. There is no joy. He cannot have it. Praise the Lord. John 14 verse 30. Let's look at one scripture. Are you getting blessed tonight? This, this teaching is a self-examination. Many of us, you are seeing that this is, the solu this is the problem. God is already showing you that this is it. Look at me. There is no man who has the spirit of love that will not have friends around him? Please, ladies, listen to me. When you find out, see, this is, this is what is responsible for many things. I know there are other factors, but there are, the Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. And this, this thing is a strategy. It drives your destiny helpers away from you. I'm not just talking about relationship marriage. No, destiny helpers. This spirit of anger, this spirit of fear, this disobedience has cheated a lot of us. We have carried over seasons that should be seasons of breakthrough and liberty. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 30. Hallelujah. Now this is a big key. We are talking about the laws of the spirit now. Everybody say the laws of the spirit. Or say the laws of victory. Let me call them the laws of victory. We are talking of commanding victory. This is a law in the spirit. It says, I will no longer talk much with you. Can I have it in Amplified? Is it possible? Amplified. I will not talk with you much. For the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of the world is coming. And he has no what? Claim. Aha. That means... For everyone Satan afflicts, he claims. There is a claim. Are you getting what Jesus is saying? This is Jesus speaking now. He said, and he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Therefore, he has no power. This is a big key. Please, I want to show you laws of victory right now. That means every time Satan looks at you, he's finding something that looks at like him in you. And if he finds it, it gives him access. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When 
when demons oppress people, it's not to say the word of the Lord is not powerful. There must be something. And we're going to explore this. Say after me, the loss of victory. There must be something. And is that something we want to... There are three things. Three things that give Satan access, legal access over people. Number one, covenants. Please write it. Covenants. Are you getting blessed tonight? See, many of you, as you are hearing what I'm saying, I tell you, you will just be getting free at once. Because when you hear the word, the word is sent. It can heal and it can deliver. Say after me, covenants. Now, the word covenant is very important. Just leave that verse. Covenant is a very important word. I know we have bastardized it in the body of Christ. We just shout covenant, covenant. Let me tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. What did I call it? An agreement. A pact, a contract. Huh? Between two or more people. Based on clearly defined terms. A covenant, an agreement between two or more people. Whether one is higher than the other, that's not the issue. Are you getting me? Based on what? Clearly defined terms. Notice my definition. An agreement between two or more people. You can't enter a covenant with yourself. Clearly defined terms with grave consequences when there is any violation. This is a standard definition. Notice the word agreement. Notice the word what? Clearly defined terms. Notice the word consequences when it is violated. If you understand this, you will see the reason. Please look at me. While certain geographical territories in Nigeria still have certain strongholds. Everybody says strongholds. There are places in this country that the men are generally irresponsible. Geographically speaking, true or false. You may have been exempted by light, but it does not stop the fact that that's... Are you getting me? Where I come from, the people drink. They drink a lot. Are you getting me? I know... Remember one time we went for crusade that they told us we went for crusade in a certain place and they said when they give birth to the baby, they dip alcohol and just touch it in his mouth small. And the guy gets up a drunkard all his life. <laughs> he can go to Harvard and return back to Nigeria as a drunkard. Listen, I want you to understand covenants. So, watch this. Our forefathers, because when you understand the history of the continent of Africa, I hope you know that traditional religion was before the coming of Christianity. Do you agree with me? Praise God. May I announce to you that every tribe, every tongue, every nation in Nigeria was and is still involved in some level of witchcraft. Say amen. amen. So the issue of saying, you, you are from this place. Your people eat people as if you are innocent. Everybody's forefather was an idol worshiper of some sort. I said the last time, it's just that others were more dedicated than others. Others were less as fair, but they were still involved. They were still involved. Are you getting this now? So that you have no right to point fingers at anybody. Say you are coming from this state. You are coming from this. We hear that your people do this. You're, no, you don't have that right. That authority is not given to you. Because everybody was an idol worshiper of some sort. Are you getting my point? Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. What could he have worshipped? only idols and when God called him Jake, all of the people the, as from Abraham that was when they started understanding the person called Jehovah are you getting me now he revealed himself to Abraham Isaac, Jacob and they continued with that revelation until the word became flesh praise God now what does that mean that tells you that our forefathers went to the gods that they only knew. And they, on our, see, in the village, they understand covenant very well. Are you getting my point? They go and meet these strange spirits through mediums, through priests. Is that true? And they say, okay, protect our land from war. 
It started during war. Because from Bible days till today, they've been fighting. People have always been fighting. So because of fear, the kings and elder statesmen went on behalf of territories. Are you getting me now? None of us here is from America. So you cannot pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Are you getting my point? Don't give me that face as if me, I was born. You were born in a plane, no problem. But when I finish this explanation, you will know that you must stay and deal with certain things and conquer it. Nazareth, where Jesus came, had a spirit that was manifesting. Nothing good comes out from there. Nathaniel testified that can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus had to exempt himself. Are you, are you getting my point? Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, they went to these gods to seek protection, to seek prosperity, to seek fruitfulness. And all of this, this is what Satan wants. Satan always wants you to come to him. Declare your loyalty and then he will give you. See, that a man is rich does not mean it's God that gave the money. Satan makes people rich. Are you hearing me? Satan, Satan took Jesus to a mountain. He said, look at all of... He showed him the glory of the world in a span of time. He said, I will give you if you bow down. All Satan wants is the bowing down part. And our elders carried their heads on our behalf. We were in their loins. We all bowed our heads to these devils and idols. And they said, we agree. Protect our children's children. Because that's all they knew. Don't get angry at our fathers. To them, they felt it was the best thing they were doing. Are you getting my point? That's why when they came for war, you won't see barricade, but you enter a city, people will start slapping you till you go out. The protection, the altars were speaking. You get the point? You see a man moving, nobody's protecting him. You try to touch him. Somebody somewhere because the covenant speaks. Are you getting my point? Ratified by blood. And it is renewed periodically. Usually, annually. People go, and that's the whole idea of many of what we call traditional festivals. It doesn't matter if they call a pastor to say opening prayer. No. That's not, the whole idea is a, what do I call it now? A, a revisiting of these altars. Please get this thing. We're talking of the laws of victory. You must understand this story. Now, down the line, many of our parents left the village and they came to, they had the privilege to go and study in universities. They went abroad, you know. They did a lot of things and the missionaries came. That's why when the missionaries came to Nigeria, they brought the gospel, but they died. The demon said, you are coming to save people. Now, they knew that Jesus was Lord, but many of them did not understand the principles of the kingdom. As soon as they entered the land, they said, you want to stop this and that and that. The next thing, malaria just caught the man. They sent drugs from America, from everywhere. The man still died. And the priest who is responsible will just come out. Do you know how people in the village live old? 101, 114, no glasses. Ha ha, I remember you. Is it die now? Die. The man won't die. In other words, I'm alive, I'm watching. Listen. <clears throat> you keep becoming an inconvenience to generations. Everybody must send you money. You started the trouble. The children grew, married, had their children. All kinds of things go on in the village. And the reason for all of this, listen. The reason for all of this is, I shared it the last time, transgenerational allegiance. Are you getting me? This is what Satan wants. What did I call it? Transgenerational allegiance. Where one generation will now say, we are the young people now. We are bowing to you. And you buy into that generation. So, before a child is giving birth to, they are already covenanted to all kinds of spirits. You, you just get up and come and meet somebody. I like this girl. Oh. Pray, you won't pray. Be born again, you won't be born again. You just come. The day you say, I like her in the night, you just see somebody who say, be careful. The day you ever come near that lady, she's my wife or she's this, and you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, oh God, I won't do again, no. The kind of warning. Listen, 
Many people think this thing is not real. Let me tell you this night. Except you are pretending. This is what has happened to many people here. You know the church is a place of we, 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 we allow suits like this to just make us lie over things. But tonight we are addressing issues. Some of you are going home after next week. This is the revelation you must take with this understanding. Some of you will be angry after today. And you say, so this is the mystery behind this lack of marriage in our family. Behind this, there are, there are cities that have what we call the cause of poverty. A professor will finish, retire, and go back to his village and be riding a bicycle. That's the covenant for, for violating this thing. There are many people like that. You see somebody who just leave London and say, I'm going back home. I, I like the village. Oh God, what are you looking for? Village that is room, room, room like shop. I like it. I'm still staying there. The person stays there until he dies. Education does not cast out demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Cologne and sure and smelling nice does not cast out demons. Good English does not cast out demons. I wish it did. Would have had less demons in our generation, but they are still here. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, tonight it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every. Sing one more time with revelation from your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Seek to break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain. Let's just sing it one more time. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Satan comes to find expression there must be something that he can hold on to number one is a covenant hear me listen a possibility exists that you can become a victim of a covenant although you were not there when it was enacted were you there when Jesus died did you see him on the cross and even if you go to Jerusalem and cry in front of a cross you didn't see him but by covenant, he brought you into it. And it's as real as standing there. To an extent that Paul can say, I have been crucified. Don't lie to us, Paul. Where were you? This is the power of a covenant. Footballers score and they say, we scored. Were you there? You understand covenant. So, here, here's how the Bible puts it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means somebody can say, as for me and my house, we will serve this shrine. Is that true? Did they call everybody one by one to say, Benga, are you interested? He said, no. Lillian, are you interested? Somebody went on behalf of a nation and entered a covenant. This is the predicament of the nation of Africa. And the kind of gospels we are inheriting from America will not deliver us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not criticizing them. 
we salute them but there's got to be more this is africa a nation that god a continent that god desires the whole eyes of hell is upon africa they know they know that savior shall arise this is the mountain that's why there's multiplied mysterious sicknesses and the rest i will show you listen i'm going to show you certain revelations and you will see why some sicknesses cannot be cured medically no matter how you try because they were not sicknesses in the first place hallelujah praise the lord is somebody getting angry tonight so satan must be free of whatever he can lay claim of in your life say covenant some of our parents, let's be honest, even went to an extent of inviting one baba. Tell the truth. Is that true? Some of you were small. You just saw somebody just come. They say, please give him a seat. Say, all right, everybody come. The next thing you saw something boiling, no fire. Ah. Who are you? Say, just sit down. Turn your back or remove your clothes. This one for husband. This one for prosperity. This one for that. Listen. Listen. Brothers and sisters, I want to, I can kneel down and beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that because you just said, I give my life to Jesus Christ, everything went. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Are you getting me? And I'm going to explain to you, that does not mean the Bible is, tells a lie when it says you are a new creation in Christ. I've taught you the structure of God's way of communicating. He speaks as though you have reached the end. It's not his fault. It's the way his nature is. He does not speak as if he's bounded by time. When he looked at Gideon, he said, Oh mighty man of value. How long did it take until he conquered before he walked in that experience? I'm not denying that the word of God says this about you. But brothers and sisters, it will take the experiential application of kingdom truths Otherwise, you will see it in the world, but you may never get it. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? I saw certain things at work in my father that I always wondered. I was always fighting with my father growing up. That's how some of you are. You just see that. What is this resentment between your parents and you? It's almost as if you are rivals. You cannot explain. There is a story you do not know. This is what I'm explaining to you. It's a cry from altars. A man marries a wife. One day he gets up and just looks at her and everything about her irritates him. Everything irritates him. They go to counselors and they say, are you looking hot? You too, help yourself now. She says, okay, oh, go and buy the clothes. The day she's wearing, the man looks as if he didn't see anything. <laughs> you did this for me, don't be stupid. Because these things are spiritual things. Some of us here, this is God answering your question right now. You, every time something good is about to come to your life, you say, okay, daddy, help me. There is a small competition. You find out that that spirit rises again. That's the day your father comes back angry. And he says, where, where did you say you are going? Lagos for where? You are not going anywhere. Some of you, it was when you started coming for koinonia that the war in your family started. You were minding your business for as long as you were not serving God, you were not serving, doing anything. You, one kind of resentment you cannot explain, brothers and sisters. When the Bible says kingdom shall rise against kingdom, your question should be which kingdom? There are kingdoms, there are thrones, there are dominions. They still speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why they are speaking? You have violated the terms of that covenant. Because according to the covenant, the fraternity continues. Now, based on the knowledge of the gospel, all right? That you have had. You are now saying, I'm not bowing down to anything. Your parents told you, we are not going to any village. We are not doing anything again. These altars, as far as they are concerned, they have been destined to come and protect your family. Now they come and you are saying, Jesus Christ is going to protect my family. They say, okay, we'll see. So their goal is to frustrate whatever is not them so that you will return. You see it? That's why when things get bad, they say, this one that this leg is swelling up. You, where did you go, sir? You see, I was sitting down they say, oh yeah, go home. <laughs> when you go home, the elder laughs. He gives you word of knowledge as you are entering. He says, I knew you would come. What is he saying? I knew you would come. And when you come, he says, why are you pretending as if you were not born here? 
you went to London and it washed away what we are, your fathers have been doing. And you too, you will kneel down and say, Kai, I'm suffering this contract. Let me just do it. Do you know what? Satan hits you at your greatest point of desperation because at that point you can do anything. He won't disturb you until you get to 30 years. And then you say, are you really ready to marry? And some of our mothers will say, see, oh, let me tell you the truth. There's one story. I didn't tell you because you were very young. Just go to the village and marry in peace. Many pastors come and think that it's your collar that drives demons. I must marry this girl. She say, I have a bad history. I must still marry you. And the demons say, marry. Are you ready to take this? Yes, please. Hurry up. You just marry and you marry something else. The ministry dies. Everything dies. The woman is not bad, but the covenant is speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Who wrote it? When? Where did, what did they use to write the handwriting? And the Bible says, ordinance that spoke against us. There are ordinances that speak against people. I saw certain traits in my father. I hated it. But as I grew, I started finding it manifest in me. And I seemed to be helpless about it. When I caught this revelation, I flogged it out with destiny. You know that song? I'll never let you go. It's not the song. It's what he said before the song I want to quote. He says, there comes a time. That's not what I'm saying. You think I cannot sing it? He says, there comes a time. Is that not what he said? In a man's life, when you have to do what? Just like Jacob and say, I won't let you go. This must be this your night. Don't celebrate Christmas the way you have been doing. There is no reason to celebrate when you have not dealt with what Jesus Christ came to solve. Many of us pamper Satan in our lives. You are not angry enough. I promise you, if you treat Satan as a gentleman, you will die like a chicken. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. You must get angry and say, enough. Come on now. Enough. The day my younger sister was going to write exam years ago, she collapsed in the exam hall. What happened? Nothing. Brothers and sisters, covenants are powerful. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of you, when you were not in Christ, you enter different kinds of covenants. I want to say something that will surprise you and I apologize. I'm not a law and a religious person, but I just need to put this because I'm talking about covenant. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to tell you something that will surprise you. Do you know sex is a covenant? Look at me, please. Huh? Like I said, I'm not reminding you of your past or anything. No, I'm just bringing it to help you understand. Everybody say soul tie. Say it. Say soul tie. Listen. It's not about sex, sleeping with somebody. That's not what Satan is after. There is a law in the spirit that whoever you sleep with, you are one in the spirit. You become one with that person. Are you getting me? I know Nigerian films paint it very nice. They just show a romantic lady coming with her chest open and one guy like a sheep to the slaughter coming. But let me tell you the word of God right now, this night. That Christianity that you say, oh, I will serve God, but forget God is, let me tell you, sex is a covenant. Are you getting my point? And the trouble is, Many of us, because of certain things, maybe our past lives or whatever it is, we got involved in all kinds of things. And then when we got born again, we just said, okay, everything is over. This is the reason why you will see a bishop who once was sleeping around or doing something. Are you following me now? Or a pastor. Or a, he was in the world drinking and smoking. And he just comes. And he says he's born again. When the guy says he's born again, he's standing and he's preaching. And one day, that altar strikes. Bam! And the person gets up. He's still a man of God. Though. The next thing, he's scouting around for ladies. This is what? This is the predicament many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. Hallelujah. 
covenant. Number two. What gives Satan access? We have to hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. Have you gotten it? When, see, look at me. I'm one person who hates putting a law on people. When you impose laws on people, you make them religious. Give them the revelation behind it and they will comply accordingly. This is the mistake many parents are making. The moment the son gets to 13 years, they say, Samuel, come. Say the day, hold your ears. The day I see any lady around you, that day, you will know I gave birth to you. And the guy said, what kind of embarrassment? You know, he's a teenager. He's feeling like he's a big boy. Ladies like him. See his mother falling his hand and embarrassing him. Hallelujah. And then they now preach. Don't sleep around. Don't smoke. So person say, why? And they are not listening. Why? Because those who smoke, there is a name they give them. They are the big boys in the campuses. Why are you telling me not to smoke? Why are you telling me not to sleep around? If you explain the spiritual revelation, it will threaten you to obedience. You see it? If I ask you, sit down on this chair and remain there. After a while, you will be wary. I didn't tell you why you sat down. But if I tell you there is a lion outside, you are free to go. But this is the best position. Will you sit? Even if the seat is pinching you, will you stand up? Because now I've given you a revelation to sponsor your patience. This is the religious thing we do in church. We come and meet people. Don't do this as if they wanted to do it. You are seeing a lady jumping from man to man and she's crying. She came to you for counseling. Say, man of God, I've been sleeping with everybody. You, you now join and slept with her again. And she went to another person. This is what a lot of people do because it's not an issue of psychology. This is an issue of spirits. Oh, let's pray. Father, I now release you in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. And the demon say, let's go. <laughs> because it's not by grammar. Through the greatness of thy power. Not your vocal composition. Through the greatness of your power. You are going home. Listen. God is sending many of us as saviors. You are going back angry. Every time... God wants to liberate a home, a family. He seeks for a man, an agent, an ambassador. I know that there are some of you who are already doing it. This thing is all, many of you right now, you are responsible. Do you know your prayer life is already, you are feeling the freedom already in the air in your family. It's just for some things to come in. And can I tell you, when it breaks, it has broken forever. For sure. This is the balance with deliverance. Many people make it look as if you should be in bondage when you are free. No, 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 no. When you are set free. For he who the son of man sets free is free indeed. But until then, you are in bondage indeed. Hallelujah. Goodness. Let's rush. So I've told you that, okay, covenant number two, yokes. Many of us don't know what a yoke is. A yoke is a self-imposed predicament. Self-imposed predicament by fraternizing with Satan. Personal self-imposed. Why self-imposed? Don't touch this. Yeah, I must touch it and see what will happen. You touch it and your hand refuses to leave it. Yokes. Some of us, our stubbornness is what is responsible. The yokes on our lives are taller than us. The way we are standing like this. You are just standing alone. But the yokes that are on us. Because we are stubborn and rebellious to the ways of God. But tonight the Lord brings liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Liberty. Yokes. Hallelujah. Number three. Associations. 
Now, I know this one looks like a cool one. Wait till I finish explaining it. Associations. Look at me. Have you read the scripture that says what fellowship? Everybody say fellowship. Say koinonia. It didn't say what visitation. Are you getting me? So, I'm not saying you, you will walk with unbelievers. The Bible did not say what visitation. It says what fellowship. Conscious fraternity with wrong people. Let me tell you something. People carry spirits and they carry presence. Jonah entered the boat. People, their whole life damaged. He came with something else. The ark came into the house of Obed-Edom. And within that small time, Jacob came in with a blessing from his father. And he caused Laban to prosper. Personalities have spiritual implications. Don't let anybody just come and hop in and out of your house in the name of solidarity with your village people. Send them away if they are not ready to listen to the principles of the kingdom. Because when Rachel went, she carried her gods. That's what the Bible tells us. When Rachel went, she carried her gods. Jacob, the husband, but Rachel carried her small gods. Everybody say associations. The Bible says, what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? And what communion, two words, same words, koinonia. What communion has light got to do with darkness? It says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Now, many of you, look at me. Many of you have inherited all kinds of demonic things because of wrong and careless associations. And you say it does not matter. You have friends that all they watch is pornography. You go to their, their houses, they are watching hardcore pornography. But because of your solidarity to them. Are you seeing? Your solidarity. I don't want them to call me holy, holy. I don't want them to call me this. And you get there. You can't watch those kinds of things and still be yourself. Because those things are transference of spirits. Are you getting me? You have a mind, you have a brain, it has memories, it can replay, it can fast forward. So you go and watch all kinds of junks. And you come back and you are wondering why every time you see every lady you are feeling like sleeping with them. Something is wrong. And you come for koinonia like this, the water of the world washes you. And you get up and go back. There are many of us, we, we entered wrong relationships because of our friends. They came together and said, you said, don't fall our hand. This guy has been disturbing us. Let me tell you straight to the point. If you are not bold to make a stand for Jesus Christ, you may not arrive at your destination. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight's teaching may be hard, but let me tell you, God is speaking to us here. Break free from, from wrong associations. Love is a command. Association is not. It's not a commandment. Some of you still have bad friends. Terrible associations. You have, a, you have somebody who came to your room. Listen to me. And the guy said, sorry, oh, I don't have accommodation. Let me stay in your room. He's staying in your room. You come back in the evening and you see that a lady, he brought a lady in your room. And he just laughed. He said, bros, bros, go and take fresh air now, I beg. And you are laughing. I say, guy, you serve now. Wow, 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 wow. Come back after one hour. You see that associations creating an atmosphere. I preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere. Beans cannot grow on this carpet. True or false? You can't just throw beans and expect it to grow like that because the atmosphere is not conducive. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us that need to go and destroy things that we are associating ourselves with. He told Gideon, Go and destroy those things. There are, there are some of us, I've said it, our parents are born again, but there's one demonic bow and arrow or one kind of thing. It was, I'm not saying everything is bad, but some things were dedicated. You know it. You carry it and keep it there. Am I blessing you? I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Because this is what is responsible for the downfall of many families. Hallelujah. Families, listen. Those of us who are parents here, listen. Please let us help our children. 
Some of some families, even as see, this is not the thing of young people. There are families that are associating with wrong people. They are the ones that carry your father and mother to one so-called prophet and they did every kind of satanic thing. Your parents were working fine until some wrong associations took them to somebody. They didn't tell you. They went and they entered the covenant on your behalf. Associations. You must get out of it. Get out of it quick. Many of us who like joining clubs, Rotary Club is nice, but others that don't have names, I-40, you say, I'm joining too. What do you know it is? They say, when we join, you come and touch the table three times and you go. You too, you now carry your big head. You go and touch it three times. You see, let me tell you, don't, the Bible says, do not be unaware, ignorant of the devil's devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodology. In the name of association, Many of us have joined every kind of satanic sites online. I'm a member. I'm a this. I'm a that. They send you one envelope something. They say, okay, put the handkerchief here. Many of us, is associations that have made us go and collect all kinds of things. Love portion. I hear they do it in Zaria City. When you rub it, it will make the, the guy. What if the guy is now more powerful than you? You don't know that he must have a repercussion. This is what you don't know. There's no free lunch with Satan. You will first eat. When you finish, you will tell you the bill. And you must pay. You must pay. So, when you say they gave me this, to make this guy, ladies, hear me. Anything God cannot do for you, let it not be done. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Husband can come from marine spirits. Hear me. Children can come from marine spirits. A lot of people, a lot of people are in error and derision. Gentlemen, look at me. Let me tell you something. If your quest for money makes you to join all kinds of demonic associations, it will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many clubs right now that are helping people to get money fast. When advent of, of everybody being a big boy, billionaire 23, millionaire 21, you too, you come, me too, I must be, before 28, nothing is wrong with that. Except for the fact that when the quest for money becomes a desperate thing, they take you everywhere. They ask one wealthy man, they say, what is the secret of your prosperity? And he said something very scary. He didn't say, I read good business books. He said, I was in a certain place at a certain time. And in that certain place, there were other people like me. But I was the one who took the step they did not take. He said, that's the secret to his wealth. Will you follow that kind of person? What kind of scary description is that? You were at a certain place at a certain time. The fact that other people didn't join should tell you whatever they say they should do is scary. Sadiq Ibrahim, remember the gentleman that came here? They made him to sleep on a grave for three days. How many days? How many days? Many of us are willing to do it. He said three days is not better than 12 years. Do it. Do it. I remember Papa Akwami, they did. You remember one video we watched some years ago of one guy, one worry guy that used to be an armed robber. Eight years robbing people, nobody catches him. He won't run after when you are chasing him. You will just not see him. And what will happen to you will serve as a lesson. The next day you see him, you will leave him quietly. They can enter the bank. I mean it. They can. They don't rob 10,000, uh -uh, 10 million, 5 million, 100 million. And this guy himself, the covenant is see, There are many people, wealthy people who are under all kinds of covenants. Part of the agreement is you don't help your family members or you don't help yourself. They are your uncles. That's why you can be dying and they won't help you. They are not greedy. They are under oath. Are you getting me? That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord. It make it rich. You see the sorrow part? That's what Satan cannot remove from your life. Mysterious livings. 
your father just comes and says, all right, I'm going to have a personal room right now. Your mother says, after how many years? He said, you had me. Go and find another room. And the guy stays alone. You wake up in the night, you see him standing like this. Ah, daddy, what is this? He said, go out, go out, lock the door. This man is sweating for hours. Why? He said he must walk. This destiny must move forward. Be careful. What you call moving forward may be the biggest retrogression in your life. Whatever God does not give me, let me not get it. I won't get anything in this life. I prophesy into your life. May you not get anything in this life that will take you to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am saying this because... Steve, right now, people are under pressure to prove to others they are successful. Every young man graduates and he wants to show that within one year, I bought a car, I bought this, and people are entering every kind of wrong, it's first associations that lead people into this thing. And they go and join some groups. They see a young man and say, you, how did you do it now? Now, how oh, this one, that to an extent that many of our pastor people are already following it now. Are you seeing that? Because the price for laboring genuinely to get the true prosperity, the seasons of proving is very difficult and almost unbearable. So many people will prefer the shortcut and that's Satan's ministry to give you shortcut. Bow. You don't need to go to the cross. Just bow and take it now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 3.27. Let's hurry up. My spirit is fired up as I'm speaking because I know that this is what is responsible for the pain of many families. Many, many, many. This is the puzzle. Are you ready now? I want to share with you a powerful scripture. Everybody look up. How do you get out of these things? How do you get out of, how do you walk in the experiential victory? Number one, the Bible gives us another law. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then after he will plunder his house. So in every house there is a strong man. And the Bible says you cannot, the, the, the barrier between you and the things you want to take is the presence of a strong man. The word strong there does not just, it means strong to the degree that your lack of knowledge permits him. Are you getting my point? You must get this key. I'm about to release a powerful key and we'll pray. It says you must first do what? Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. How do you bind the strong man? I will tell you. You don't bind the strong man by saying, strong man, I bind you. No. You bind a strong man through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. Everybody say through knowledge. You bind a strong man through knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. First, before any prophetic utterance. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. One of the, mis the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Matthew. Please let's look at it quickly. Shibaka parakosada. Matthew 16, 19. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So before we talk about binding and losing, what do we talk about first? Keys. Replace the word keys with principles. Ready? One to read. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. It is by the application of those principles you bind and lose. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is what you must do that binds Satan. There is what you must do that loses your blessings. Many people just say, I bind, I bind, I lose. There is a place for prophetic communication. But before you talk of any prophetic communication, there must be a revelation, knowledge. Hallelujah. Very important. These keys are the keys of knowledge. I will give you the principles. This is what I'm sharing with you. Principles. When you know these things, you can keep Satan where he belongs. As a ministry, we know some principles. 
and our success is not, in, is not magic. You can be prosperous by knowing these principles. And your confidence will not be the prosperity, the, but the principles you know. Because there are principles that will be applied again and again. If you get blessed without knowing why you got blessed and how the blessing came, you will be afraid to lose it. This is why many people are not givers. Because they are not sure it will come again. Revelation makes you a giver. And I will give you the principles of the kingdom. And whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say it again, revelation. This is what we lack. Revelation. What are the principles? For instance, look at me. I want to tell you some principles very quickly. Every time you find out that every door around you is being closed. You are neglecting the law of honor. Which is the principle for access. Are you seeing that? Honor is the key for access. When you dishonor people, there are doors closed towards you. Honor. Everybody say honor. If you want to receive the blessing of a father or a mother, what happens? honor and they will bless you so he told his song he said go and bring me venison so that i'll be pleased and i will bless you are you getting my point another principle the principle of open heaven is tithing it's in your bible tithing is not the key for money i've said this thing again and again tithing is not the law for money tithing does more than money Tithing is the scriptural principle for open heavens. So that whatever is done under that open heaven prospers. It is when you are a faithful tither, then this scripture becomes real. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because you are now, if you give under a closed heaven, you are wasting your time. Are you getting me? There are many faithful givers who are not tithers. God is not just after money. God is after a pattern. He told Moses, he said, ensure that you build according to pattern. Open heavens. As a ministry, by the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira in tithe. We have been faithful to the latter. I told the finance department, it doesn't matter what collection we are collecting for what. God's 10% goes not forcefully, cheerfully out of revelation. And you will live as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Honor brings you access. I shared with you my story. How that God instructed me to go to Canaan land. I've shared the story. And I carried a seed and I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. They were here. I remember, you remember that time. I told them. I woke up in the morning. To go and ease myself and the Lord told me immediately you are going without question without arguing many of us see delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure he said Abraham rose up early in the morning and when I rose up I went there I went to go and sow my seed honor gives access and when that happens I came out and I was going to enter the car for the driver to take me back to the airport let me return and the Lord told me, come out of the car. He said, kneel down on this ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And he said, from today, from today, the city is open up to you. So somebody will be seeing our messages going around. You do not know that there are keys. You see that? That's why when you criticize a man who is blessed of God, whether you are right or wrong, God will first punish you before addressing the issue. Please, are you learning something? Prayer and fasting. Listen. Prayer and fasting is the key for a vibrant, anointed spiritual life. There is, there is the place of the word. But let me tell you, prayer, there are many lazy believers around who have explained away prayer and fasting because it's hard. They just kick it away. 
and they expect you will never forget about spiritual power if you are not committed to prayer and fasting. Except you want to go and do what a lot of people are doing. But I tell you, you want authentic power? Prayer and fasting. I told you prayer and fasting. I know we say it solves many problems. But from my Bible, prayer and so fasting only solves one problem. Unbelief. It exposes the atmosphere of your spirit and helps you to comprehend the reality of the person of God in a way that you can believe him more truly. Are you seeing that? So these are many principles. Many principles. Many. There are many more. Praise is one of the dramatic principles for the instant intervention of God. You know what? This praise that many people trivialize. Is it just dancing? Da no. Praise is a mighty tool for biblical spiritual warfare. Read your Bible. It was at the shout, the healer. All the instruments and the voices and the walls of Jericho. They didn't just fall down. They sank. Praise. Are you getting it now? Very powerful spiritual principle. Tonight, the Lord is going to set many people free. And many of us in turn will carry an anointing through this revelation and go back and set a lot of people free. Next year, hopefully, we will still talk about certain things. Very quickly, let me just share this. There are three revelations you must have to be free from all of these things. Three revelations. Number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. You must. is compulsory. You must realize that you are only establishing something whose victory has been declared. Everybody say the finished work of Christ. Say it. The finished work of Christ. Because I must balance the part that I've been telling you now. A lot of us have been trained to understand as if let's just fight and see who will win. Uh -uh. Your fight is a fight of faith. And the fight of faith is taking the arsenals of the kingdom and enforcing the victory. Are you getting me? Say after me, Jesus died and conquered Satan. Conquered principalities. Conquered powers. And he has given me the victory. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says we are seated with Christ. Please believe this. You are seated with Christ. You must function from that platform. Are you getting me? You must function from that realm of truth. Although you are sick, you must believe that you are seated with Christ. The devil will say, if you are really seated with Christ, why has it not happened? You are going to apply the kingdom principles now and it will get him out. But it does not negate the fact that you are seated. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Far above. Say, he has given me a name. I am a partaker of his anointing, of his spirit, of his authority. He said, all power, all authority has been given to me. And he said, as the father sent me with the same equipping, so send I you. I, I had a revelation. I had an understanding that brought me victory. He's saying, I send you with it. Go and do exploits with it. So number one, you must have a revelation of the finished work of Christ. Number two, you must be diligent to apply the principles that cause the manifestation of whatever promise in scripture. You get the point? You must be diligent to apply. Every blessing in scripture has principles. It has your part that you will play. So it's not enough to say I've been seated with Christ. You must apply the principles. For you are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Just write it. We're out of time. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. You are only ready to judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. 
when Satan cannot find anything of himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final thing is to realize. Please realize that God is with you. I know this looks like a very simple statement. But I wish it was that simple. Moses understood. He said, do not send us from here if your presence. They just came out from Egypt. And he knew that these gods will come after them until the presence of God drives them again. In your presence. That's where I am strong. In your presence. Oh Lord, my God, in your presence, that's where I belong. I am seeking your face and touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God. In your presence, oh God. Many of us will be delivered tonight once and for all. We cannot end this meeting. See, even if you have to go and set your family members free, you cannot set others free by being like them. You must first experience the liberty of the spirit. This is a very serious moment. Hallelujah blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance please rise up on your feet give this moment every seriousness give this moment every seriousness i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed Please sing this song from the depth of your heart I will go back Say Lord I'm not going back go the way back I came To the way it used to be Before your presence came and changed Sing it two more times I will go back I will go back Can't go back For your presence One more time I will go back I will go back And go back To the way it used to be Before your presence came and changed me Hallelujah Tonight's deliverance will be in this order Number one we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. Hallelujah. Let the devil know you mean business tonight. Instrumentalists, you walk with me. Hallelujah. After you pray in tongues, we are going to pray. The devil that will not let you go this night has not yet come into existence. Are you hearing me? You will shake off these shackles once and for all. Are you ready now? Go ahead and pray. Instrumentalists, go ahead. Please pray. This is the last teaching service for the year. You cannot. You can't go back the way you came. So go to Pekete, pray on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your loved ones. There's victory here tonight at a platter of gold. Enough is enough. Shackles of poverty. Shackles of failure. Pray, pray in tongues. 
just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of victory. Your long awaited victory is here at last. Here at last. In this last teaching service of the year. Say, Lord, I'm tired. Rota papa kate preke tele baba baba. Reke tele kate praka na bala na 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 na. Reke tele praka na bala na bala. Do it for the sake of your generation. Do it for the sake of your children. Do it. Pray. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. Do it for the sake of your children. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of the parents. Rekata tabaka tabala la 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 la. Ekere le 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 mosh. Shoko topo kataba. Don't say it does not concern me. Be humble enough tonight. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't say it does not concern me. Be the savior that will arise from Zion. Rescue the perishing. I take a step forward to pass up. Be that agent of change tonight. Rekete te 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 I don't just want to teach this. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hear me, brothers and sisters. This is the explanation to many mystical things that are happening in our families. This is the explanation. There is a devil out there. And tonight, if you will only stand, you will be that savior. Please, tonight, if it's for the sake of your loved ones, Say, Lord, so this is why you brought me. I will pay any price to get out of it. Sister, this is the mystery behind your late marriage. This is the mystery behind the barrenness. This is the mystery behind untold hardships. Many families are going through untold hardships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray in one or two minutes. See, let me tell you, the way some of you are praying, let me tell you straight to the point, you are not serious. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying pray till you shout the roof, but some of us are just standing and strolling around. We are not playing games here, believe me. This is for the sake of your destiny. We are here to help you. But like a hospital, no matter how we try to help you, you must cooperate. Me, I'm angry. Oh, I've been praying this. Are you getting me? You must experience this liberty. Some of you have been trusting God for job since you graduated. All you think is that hard? Let the devil live and see if the door will not open. Listen, hold on. Hold on. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. See, listen. You're going to pray. Right now, before I pray for you, see, Look up. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. I'm not just talking. There are things you know are happening in your life and your family. I'm not doubting the fact that you're a man of God. Are you hearing me? You are going to pray. Are you getting me? There are some of us is lost. There are some of us, whatever it is, you know that some of us is the cause of poverty. Is on our families and is on everybody went to school, but they are living as if nobody has seen the four walls of a university. Let me tell you, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if this is all we do tonight and you receive your liberty, this is pre miracle service. Are you getting me? I'm just doing my job to help you here tonight, but brothers, I want you to pray. Are you listening to me in the next five minutes? 
you're going to mention those limitations in your family and say lord tonight this night right now lift your voice and pray Lord, the wickedness in my family must stop. Pray it. Lord, the hatred in my family must stop. The unfaithfulness in my family must stop. Pray it. The unfruitfulness. Please pray. Whatever makes doors to close when it gets to my door, it must stop tonight. Doors of marital delay, they must be open. Pray. Whatever is responsible for my ministry not flourishing, pray. 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 Ministry is not that hard. If you are struggling, something is wrong. Pray for your finances. Pray. Please pray. Mothers, pray. Fathers, pray. Pray. Kakoto prekete Ekroto sho prekete balaraba. Rakata tata. Rakoto prekete. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. This is business tonight. Confront gates. Confront gates. Confront gates. Le koto prekete. Ekreto shekete. Rekete te 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 te. Epokoto prokoto. Ekrekete lebosh. It shall come to pass. The body shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke can be broken. The covenant can be broken. The cause can be broken. Jesus paid the price already. Our job is to enforce it. Rekoto prekete, e krotos ko pariyaraba. Rokoto prekete, for the sake of your destiny, for the sake of your children, break some circles, break some circles. Enough is enough. Break some circles. Every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. Every covenant. Or every ordinance Lord that is speaking over my life whether I know it or not every covenant that has come tonight I confront it willingly consciously lift your voice I break it every covenant every spell every enchantment pray Every covenant, oh God, Jesus died already. I break it from my life. Rekoto prekete, I break it, oh God, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. Every covenant that brings loss, that brings failure, that brings hardship, that brings delay, I break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the spirit in this place. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I minister to us. One more prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, 
wherever i have given the devil legal access let the blood speak are you getting me whether it's my mistake whether it's my carelessness let the blood speak pray let the blood speak the blood can speak above every other blood there's blood speaking in your village but there is the blood of the son of the living god it has a voice it speaks mercy it speaks freedom it speaks liberty Lord speak I plead the blood over my failures I plead the blood over my mistakes pray I plead the blood over my carelessness pray whatever gives Satan legal access in my life and my family let the blood speak Let the blood speak higher. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. Tonight is your night of liberty. Let the blood speak. Satan come out unto me and does not find anything of himself let the blood speak against altars against yokes against covenants the mystery of the blood is the one last card that satan cannot resist Hallelujah. 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 I'm ready to pray for you. See, some of you will be shocked tonight. Be, I know I, I, I prayed for people for, the, for deliverance and the rest. Many of you will be surprised tonight. We have a few minutes, but we want it to be thorough. This one is not for your family. This one is for yourself. If you don't believe it, no problem. We are not offended. But for those who know that tonight must be this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to pray. I cannot tell you the things I have seen from the time we began to pray. Brothers and sisters, there are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking against people. There are altars speaking. Some of us, you know what I'm saying. But tonight, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. This is what I hear in my spirit. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Father, whoever is delivered tonight, we put a barricade. It must be complete deliverance tonight. Deliverance with proofs that they will see in their lives. And my God, I pray that no one spirit will survive the fire that is about to be released in this building. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Take this moment very, very serious. I need all the instruments and everything that can come in. Hallelujah. Drummer, follow them. I need the symbols. I'm going to pray. I see altars. See 
tonight is going to be a ministration of fire many of you don't even know what fire fire is not just for falling down hear me fire is a mystery it's the manifestation of the spirit that separates that prunes that delivers I'm going to pray don't, don't worry about how many times you have fallen tonight it will happen for real because you have prayed it and because you are tired and because God has commanded it lift your hands please hallelujah at the count of three I'd like you to shout the name Jesus once that happens Steve play everybody play hallelujah it's fire tonight it will catch some of you it will burn that chaff many of you will share stories hear me we don't kill people but I tell you some people will have to give way this night for your destiny to be open oh for sure for sure for sure I don't care what needs to be happened what needs to happen tonight the door of your destiny must open are you ready now thank you father because of your anointing let it break yokes let curses and yokes be broken at the count of three are you ready now please shout it from the depth of your heart one two three out out right now i said altars on fire i said altars fire 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 let the fire consume every altar let the fire consume every spare every enchantment bring them out bring them out I set it on fire now. I set it on fire. I command judgment. 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 Let the right hand of God be stretched right now over your life. I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains falling. Yeah, Lord, we hear the chains falling. Lift your hands, please. We have to hurry up. We're out of time. Please lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray. It's a dangerous prayer. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous prayer. You just keep your hands lifted. I'm flowing as the Holy Ghost is. There are some of you here. I'm seeing you tied. This is what I'm seeing. Those people will be released right now. I'm seeing you tight. No, just, just keep your hands. At the count of three, the power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing them tied. This is what I see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, anyone tied here, be released. One, two, get ready now. Three, Receive it now. Receive it now. Be released. I release you now, 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 now. There are people tied. I release them. Go to to te 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 te. E can te con proskoma. Re go to plegane. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. I command judgment whoever has tied you and tied your destiny 
this night I release the fire of judgment upon them. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. We just have a few minutes. But lift your hands. God is delivering people from anger. Hear me? Anger. This thing called anger. When I pray for you, you will know it's a spirit and it's not normal. Hallelujah. Anger. Anger. Many ladies will be involved in this. Hallelujah. At the count of three, all I want you to shout is the name Jesus. Follow me, drummer. Hallelujah. Anger is a spirit. It's a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, my God, anyone under any influence of the spirit of anger, at the count of three, it will leave them forever. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Every spirit, go, 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 go. God has not given us that spirit out of them. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them right now. Come out of them right now. Anger goes from your life. Hallelujah. Lift your hands quickly. We want to pray against the spirit of fear. Many of you cannot take bold steps. You are afraid of everything. You are afraid of failure. You are afraid of success. You are afraid of marriage. You are afraid to take steps. You are afraid of starting a business. What if I fail? That spirit must leave you this night. Lift your hands. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. Are you ready now? Lord, at the count of three, as they shout that name, Jesus, I command fear. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It must leave you right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Fear, go. 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 I command fear everywhere. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. Go, go. Come out of God's people right now. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I cast it now. Hallelujah. Listen. Now I'm going to pray against the spirit of disobedience. Non-compliance. Man, this spirit must lead you to obey the principles of God. Are you hearing me? And I believe this should concern everybody. You should say, Lord, whatever makes me to find it hard to obey the principles of the kingdom, it must leave. Lift up your hands. Complete, prompt obedience. The Bible says his laws are not burdensome. Hallelujah. Shout this at the top of your voice. That name Jesus. I'm going to count five. At the count of five, 
I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. That name, Jesus. And Lord, let every spirit that sponsors disobedience, rebellion, and hardness of heart, let it leave your people right now. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Every spirit of disobedience, go, 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 go. Go now. Now. Spirit of rebellion, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Spirit of disobedience, I curse you. I curse you. I curse you. Prophesy over your life. From today, in the name of Jesus, release this lady right now. I see you already in the spirit. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Out. Out right now. On your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out. Out of her. On your mark, get set. Out you go. Look, don't waste our time. Go, go. Please, no manifestation. Go out now. Now. I forbid every useless manifestation. We're out of time. Just go. Now, leave her. Leave her. Look at me, Usher. Walk with me. I said, leave her. Go. See, do you know why I say you should leave her? I'm, I'm, I'm flowing under a heavy unction. Just leave her. Let's continue what we're doing. Hallelujah. Prophecy does not reveal, it creates. Have you not left her? Where did she go to? On your knees and out of her. Now. On your knees and out. Quickly, don't waste our time. I gave an instruction on your knees and out. Many of you think it's out. That's how some of you get deceived. You say, thank you, Jesus. On your knees and out. Please listen. I pray right now. to speak over your life right now in the name that is above all names every voice right now that is contrary to Christ in your life right now let it be silence forever in the name of Jesus let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let it be silenced in the name of Jesus. Every altar that speaks against you, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Whoever is responsible for the predicaments in your life, I judge them this night. Amen. 
every spirit that is responsible for poverty and failure in the mighty name of Jesus be free from it now 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 any other thing that ties you down whatsoever it is both for yourself and your family members be released right now in the name of Jesus be released right now in the name of Jesus be released right now in the name of Jesus in place of that cause I put a blessing upon your life blessed beyond the cause blessed beyond any covenant I bless you many of you don't know what I'm doing just receive I put a blessing on your life I put a blessing on your life let it create a garden of Eden everywhere you go I turn things around for your favor I release favor I release blessings you are free you are free I declare you free Therefore, whatever has not been working in your life, I command it to begin to work now. I command it to begin to work now. Whatever should have come into your life and is still pending, whether your life partner, whether your job, I pray that from now to next miracles, this miracle service, within these seven days, may God do something that will surprise you. I said may my God do something that will surprise you. The miracle is for the believer. The miracle is for the believer. Lord in seven days change the stories of men. In seven days transform people in a dramatic way. May they return on Friday with fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. You've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making any long discussion. I'm going to invite you to come. Please listen. This is a very solemn moment. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, and you know that you, make, you need to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are, whether inside or outside. Your salvation is the number one step to your total and complete liberty. And right now, as we begin to celebrate them, you've never made a decision for Jesus or you are rededicating your life, please leave your seat and come out right now. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing. Let's celebrate them. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't sit back. This is the moment of salvation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait for you. Koinonia, keep clapping for them. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. There are still more people coming. Don't sit back. Don't let the devil keep you. Forward ever. Backward never. The devil will never take charge of your life. Jesus gives you a new beginning tonight. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. There are people coming from outside. Keep coming. We don't care how bad it is. Just keep coming to Jesus Christ. For as many who will come, he will in no wise despise. Come, keep coming. God bless you. It will break you free. Hallelujah. These three boys, you people smoke. You smoke all kinds of things, but you will be delivered today. As you were coming, I saw it. They smoke this thing. This funny things, three of them they are making a bold decision for Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah now thank you for this bold decision is that you? come and give me a big hug I'm happy to see you safe give me a very big hug bless you, hallelujah now lift your hands to heaven lift your hands to heaven Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is a very deep and serious confession. Okay? Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. 
I believe you rose again for me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I'm a child of God. The nature of sin leaves me. And I receive the life of Christ. My name is in the book of life. And I receive grace to live a life of holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You brought them by your power to preserve them. I thank you because you set them free from every chain and shackle of Satan. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. I break that addiction. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. It will never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Thank you for making this bold decision. Please just follow the ushers. They will have your details. Just turn. Where are the ushers? Direct them. There's somebody directing you. Just turn around and they will have your details in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, call 081-38-32-54-63 or 080-33-50-8735 or 0034-00-39-36. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash koinonia. Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore ENI You can also download our messages on www.forshare.com Eternity Network International duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 